Plot. What's up, guys? Welcome to Kind of Funny's MCU in Review. Today's episode is Guardians of the Galaxy. Bang. Nick is back. The return of Nick. Bang. 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 Greg Miller, Kevin Coelho, Andy Cortez, Tim Geddes, of Hi. course. Uh, you can get the show every Tuesday at 9 a.m. on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny or podcast services around the globe. You just got to put in Kind of Funny Reviews. That's the name of the podcast. It's also available on Spotify. So that's great. What do you got for me, Greg? Nothing. Kevin's real mad that that there was happening, is. but there I knew is. it would go away. It went away. What was happening, no, ladies okay. and gentlemen? You'll I will tell know. you. If you want to stay for the post show, patreon.com slash kind of funny for just $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> <Bagu, laughs> <Bagu, Bagu>. this. <laughs> We're, we have some breaking news about that, but we'll get to it in Ragu. <laughs> it's not that breaking. What I think? Oh, I got excited. Well, some, some That's a little tease to stick around until we get to uh, Ragu. Nick didn't know because, of course, he didn't watch the episode at all. Mm-hmm. But uh, Captain America: Winter Soldier is our new number one. Mm-hmm. It has been. I uh, no, so good. vehemently disagree with this. If we could go back and do a revote from last week, now that I am present, you. parliamentary procedure dictates that I have to be here. I am the co-president of Ragu Bagu. No, I have also, no. I have that, also, first off, that has nothing to do with battled as death. the other co-president of Ragu Bagu. I, have I said it was okay. Wrestled my life back from the steely cold clutches of death. And I am. I have. He said specifically. When I was looking at death. The eye. I was like death. And he's like, "What's up?" And I was like, "Is that a coffee?" He said, "Yeah, I brought it for you." I said, "Thank you." And then I was like, "I can't die yet because they are putting Winter Soldier at number one, and that is fucking blaspheme." No, they have blaspheme. It's a loading them, system. And today we're talking it. about Guardians of the Galaxy, released on August first, twenty fourteen. Uh, directed by James Gunn. Sing the whole time. Friend of the show. James Gunn. Friend of the show. How much of a friend is he? Uh, we DM every so often. Oh, okay. He told him to come on. I him do, but he's, always he's doing great stuff. Is Whatever he, he wants. What's he up to now? <laughs> what's he up to now? He's getting ready for Guardians Three. I think. <laughs> uh, he wrote Scooby Doo and Scooby Doo Two. Sure did. Uh, what a he twist also, too. Also right? wrote. Yeah, right? th- that was a fucking right? twist, man. The Scooby Doo movies. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> did you ever see them? Yeah, the ones with uh, Matthew Lillard yeah. when he played Shaggy yeah. and. What was your name? Uh, and Freddie Prinze. Sarah Jr. Michelle yeah. Geller. No, the other one. Freddie Prinze. The wonderful grandma's grandma's boy. Doesn't matter. Keep going. Daphne. But it was scrappy that we're, that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, he also wrote the 2004 Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, the one directed by uh, Zach uh, Schneider. Snyder. I love that. Didn't movie. he also do Slither? Yes. Uh, he did Slither. I Slither. love Slither. Slither. He has a history in trauma good. films as well, correct? Does he? Oh, did he come trauma? up in that group? Yeah. And that's why Trauma's in it. Yeah. In Guardians. Interesting. He also directed PG Porn, which is one of my favorite web series of all time, where he takes so porn good. stars. And then puts them in situations where like they think they're getting ready for a porn, but everyone else doesn't <laughs> doesn't know. It's so fucking good. There's like is it, seven different ones. It's PG. Is it like a reality prank show or something? No, it's scripted. Okay, it's all, all right. scripted. It's really and good. God, there's one with Very Sasha committed. Gray that will change you for a sec. Yeah, that's great. It is. That makes sense. It I'll is. Google it. Uh, <laughs> is that that entourage? You'll never get to that <laughs> video. You're never gonna get to that video by <laughs> googling it. I'll just Google Sasha Gray porn and just and see yeah, what happens. Exactly. <laughs> That's good enough, right? They don't need to. Fourteen the PG. hours later. Oh crap! It wouldn't take that long, Eddie. <laughs> the, the the budget for this movie, an astounding two hundred and thirty two point three million worth every dollar. The first Marvel movie more than Avengers. Because all the two hundred twenty million. Yeah, space mm-hmm. costs a lot of money and a lot mm-hmm. of stars. First known stars. You know what I mean? First time they're in these movies. It makes sense. Yeah, okay. <laughs> a lot of debut stars, are you saying? Like, yeah. Well, not so much debut stars, but the first time they're in any of the MCU movies. They but which been, one like, of them stars? Them, why would that cost a lot? Probably because they could Dave Batista? Yeah, like, is he a star? Chris Pratt? Zoe Saldana? You kidding me? Chris Pratt? No, Zoe it, was not a, yeah. it was not a mega star. This is the movie that made Rec. him yeah. an action star. He was a star, yeah. He, he was, was yeah, he was a Parks and Rec fat guy star. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not, and I'm not uh, trying to, I, Chris Pratt is amazing in this film, but I, it was watch, funny to watch this and be like, oh, right. This is the one that launched this entire branch of his career, which is what he is now. Yeah, mm-hmm. Bradley this is the Cooper. one he got fucking jacked Bradley Cooper. Out. Bradley Cooper. That, that is Diesel. V- Sir v- Vincent Diesel. VD. VD. <laughs> I'm sure, he loves that. <laughs> Glenn Close shouldn't have picked Vincent Diesel. Oh man, dude, so John, C. Riley, John C. Riley. Right? Who's by the way? Let's just let's just stop right here. Mm-hmm. He's the best part of this movie by the far. Best the of best part. The best part. By far. <laughs> he has well, a lot I don't, of I don't believe anyway. One hundred percent. Box office. <laughs> it made seven hundred. Seven hundred seventy three point three million dollars. Uh, and then in just box office MCU news. This week, as recording this, Black Panther broke a billion, wow. uh, which is huge news. That's nuts. Um, the only MCU movies above it are Civil War, Iron Man 3, Avengers Age of Ultron, and Avengers. Yeah. 
Um, so we'll see where that kind of nets out. I don't know if it's going to make it any farther than this. I think it might top out there because there's, there's a pretty big gap between it. How much longer till it catches up with Justice League? <laughs> <laughs> Blue pass. Yeah, just, no, I, I, just a fair amount. Paperwork's out of date here. So, um, that's all I got for you, Greg. Yeah, hit me with the plot. Let me tell you about the Guardians of the freaking Galaxy, dude. I'm here for it. That's man. what you're here for. Yeah. All right. So what you got is this grandpa, right? And he is familiar, but I don't know what he's from. <laughs> he's been Remember? so many things that I couldn't tell you one. Character actor, couldn't man. Tell you one. Character actor delivers oh a my great God. performance, right? Wait. What is this grandpa in? <laughs> no, wait, hold Haunted on. Haunted me the entire movie didn't focus on anything else. Whoa, wait, I don't wait, know wait. what happened. Wrap it up. <laughs> Until now, I have just realized that that's not his stepdad. That's no, his that's grandpa. His grandpa. Yeah. yeah. Where she's like, your grandpa's going to take real good care of you. I don't think it matters. He's going to take real good care of you. It's kind of, you need to go watch the movie. I guess when the mom, I mean, I've seen Guardians of the Galaxy the most out of any MCU movie. When she's on the deathbed, she says like, your daddy was an angel and he was made of pure light or whatever. And they cut to the old man and I like, and he's like, come on, Peter, we better go. And my initial thought was like, like he's hiding something, right? Like. I don't know. No, just wow, that's a see, grandpa. He just didn't want to see the kids. Damn, grandpa. what a he great want the kid MCU to see interview. his mom fucking uh, like flatlining. Jesus. Jesus, I thought that was like the stepdad Nick. or something. No, no, no. no. Wow. So little little Peter Quill is outside his mom's room. Little she, Peter Quill. She's dying <laughs> over there. Or some shit. We don't know. Uh, we do know. <laughs> we do know. She's got the cancer. You saw it. <laughs> Lots of cancer. Yeah, I, I mean, Riddled. but really, it's Guardians Two that reveals that. Right now, it's very I mean, much, oh, like she eat a bad milk dud? What's happening? We don't oh. know what's wrong with her. She's bald <laughs> as the yeah. day is long, but we just assume it was the milk dud that did it. <laughs> if I heard it once, I've heard it twice. Yeah, that milk dud, thing. one in seven. When you ate it once, I've heard it twice. twice. Oh, man. When you, you, ate, when you got diagnosed with cancer, were they like, was there like, it's either cancer or an attack of the milk dud? I saw it in the news. Milk duds kill people. Milk duds are scary. His mom's dying. She gives him a little gift. He's crying. What's going to happen? He runs outside. She, reach, she reaches her hand super out. Super important. Right? He's yeah. like, not no, really that no, important. No, I don't want yeah. Are you kidding? Important. That was like, it's a touching scene at the end. It's not important. I feel like it was one of the most Key touching scene. scenes Very like, important. that we've Very seen important. in the Marvel movies. It bookends <laughs> the narrative. It bookends it. He loses family on one side. Finds family on the other side. You ever think about it that fucking way? What an arc! Rock, you're important. telling me if at the end of this movie he doesn't, he just sees Gamora reaching for it. He's like, "Fuck you!" and doesn't <laughs> grab her hand. It could be anybody. Skeletor could be reaching. Yeah. He's gonna grab that fucking hand. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He's he fucking being torn apart. He's got a flaky skin disease. I'm just saying it's important. Could be the milk that It's dust. a beautiful scene. It's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Important. No. Yes. Importance for themes. Important for it to be, yes. <laughs> things that make movies good, yeah. Well, but I'm, again, like, things are going to happen. He's going to grab that hand regardless. You know what? I'll tell you what. I'm going to get a box of fucking milk duds. I'm going to get, <laughs> get, get all these so assholes and milk duds. Gross, you know what I mean? All right. So then anyways, yeah, the milk dud mom, all right? She reaches out her fucking frail little hand. Little Peter Quill, he don't want to touch that. Want he doesn't want to give up on the fact that his mom's going to die. Like he doesn't want to make it real. Mm -hmm. Then he decides he it will, but then it's flatlined, and then she's too late. The moment's gone. Mom's dead. Mm -hmm. He never touched her hand. Runs outside like a big old baby. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? Boom, beam of light. Like He's gone. What's happened? Why oh are my you bullying God, Peter Quill? Huh? Yeah, why are you, why you bullying him? <laughs> Greg's a bully. I'm just saying it wasn't that important. It wasn't important in terms of the storytelling features I'm giving you here. I think right? it was. I I'm think focusing it's on the. Well, you know what? Then I guess the what? I guess one Peter. Quill. I guess it, first off, for you other three people other than Tim, if any of you could fucking hold my jock when it comes to recapping a movie, you really you'd be it. recapping it's true. the movie. He's really good. Really 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 I got a chance. Ride the I fucking a pine and it was as the one and only Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly. I was reaching for a sports coach. And that's all. Not I got. Bill O'Reilly. That's not Pat Bill O'Reilly. There you go. Pat Bill Riley. Belichick or something. I don't know. That's Bill Cartwright. Anyway, let's jump ahead now. Guess what? You know what I mean? Now we're into space. I think we jump straight to Star Lord landing on the the planet. Mm -hmm. We do. He's after something. It seems all oh, oh, it's good. It's Indiana Jones. Water's very splashing, gritty start. Stuff. Yeah, oh, uncharted. Right. And then yeah. he goes in there, puts on headphones. It's a fun movie, everybody. Get ready for fun. We're gonna have some fun here. It doesn't matter about fucking mom's hand. You know what I mean? You gotta get your love. Gotta yeah. get your love. Singing into these love. alien space rats. That moment in the movie theaters. So like, good. Didn't know what to expect, and as soon as that happened, I remember sliding back in my seat and being like, "Oh yep. shit." Here this is going to be fucking fun. Well, yep. it's important to note, too, that up until this point, we haven't seen something tonally like this, right? Yep. We've seen things that are trying to skate, like, to kind of stay on the same line of, like, hey, fun, but, but action. Here, but it's not. And then when we get to that part where he, he puts the things on, 
Headphones presses like and, slides the, the the 1984 Walkman. Walkman onto his belt. Presses play with those sick ass driving gloves that he's wearing, and the song starts. And then you see him twirl, like you yeah. see him just twirl the and title, dancing, the and then title, the title, the title, gigantic yeah. take yeah. over the yeah. entire screen. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. You're like, this is. Gonna and they be did a, they did movie. such a great job of like making the intro the total antithesis of that. Like, oh, yeah. it was super, super dark and no, I mean just like him walking to. Oh, he's like scanning the people yeah, that used to live like there, and they're all like gone. and kind of gross. Yeah, you know we're getting. Again, now we all know the Guardians so well, but at the time, yeah, I remember being in the theater just like you, Kevin, and being like, what exactly are we getting? Because the trailers were great. And then, yeah, when it goes, poof, Guardians of the Galaxy, and he's dancing, you're like, this is fucking awesome. I have a weird question for you. This is going to be a little slight interruption. You know, I, have you? do you remember going for the first time to high school and being like, I don't know any of this, right? Mm-hmm. That feeling of that unfamiliarity. Yeah, like, a completely new place. Where you don't know yeah, the directions, and like, before. and then yeah. as you keep walking several years later, like, I remember the first time I walked in here, I didn't know what that building was, and now it's just like second nature. Yeah. I remember the first time seeing Guardians and seeing them pop and like seeing Chris Pratt at Starland and just having this feeling like, I don't know what the fuck they're doing over there at Marvel and Disney. Or Disney hadn't bought them yet, but I, they had they? No, they, 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 had, they, had, had, they had, okay. I was just remember being so confused and like not looking forward to anything that they were about to do. And boy, what a treat it was. Yeah, right? What a treat it was. So he goes through and he bops around, kicks the rats, he's little, he shows us some of his cool space tech because he, f- he glides over stuff and he's got the cool mask. Wearing the also, thing. I love, like, the MCU does such a good job with the way characters move and having each one of them have the identifiable things. Black Widow with their little fucking <laughs> Hurricane Rana spinny spins and, you know, Iron Man just has this swag. Whether he's Iron Man or Tony Stark, Whole the way cool he moves, swagger. it's like, there's just a lot of stuff. And Star-Lord, I love it because he's, he's super bumbly and just like... Kind of all around, and him jumping over that little chasm, and like not even then, he's not super yeah, steady. And it's like great, I yeah. love that he's a normal dude to an extent. Yeah, gets over there, picks the lock on some ancient door, gets in there. There's a little orb there, looks a lot like the orb from Supergirl. I imagine that's on purpose. Anyways, he puts down a little device, <laughs> sucks it out of the thing. We're they capture there. it. It's all great, and then two guys behind him, right? You turn around, whoa! It's it's two you know nameless guards, Jimon, and then Jimon Hunts, Jimon from the movie Not Enough of You watched called Air with Norman Reedus, a Skybound mm-hmm. production. I watched we it. Also. We liked uh, I thought you were going to go Gladiator, but no, yeah. I thought you were going to say Air Bud. No, oh, he, he wasn't, wasn't in, that. Gladiator. He was in Air. Oh, he was in both. Thanks. He was in Gladiator, uh, right? I mean, he had a really he dumb Air haircut, yeah, right? But Greg had a dope haircut. Everything in that movie. Did you like his haircut? I can't remember the haircut. They, oh, okay. they have a little conversation there. Sure, it was bad. He's like, oh, it's just a junker. Found it. And then he does the whole thing. Well, you might have heard me by my other name, Star Lord. He's like, who? Who? And it's a great scene. Like, come, like, come on, man. Star Lord. Immediately kills the two dudes behind him. Then they're going to sh- shoot out. He falls down. He uses he's, and he's out. Boom. He gets to his ship. Backwards, which was fucking rad as all. Right hell. out the big hole in the window of the door, yeah, or the wall. Then he's out to his ship. We got a cool, again, he's a bum guy there. He's got a nice ship. Cool things are happening. The ship named the Milano. Milano. Named after his childhood crush. My childhood Alyssa crush as Milano. well. Everyone. Who's yeah. the boss? She was the boss of me. That's who. She was the boss of me. Mm. Exactly. True. Yeah. Say Poison again, Ivy. Boy, let me tell you a little story about Alyssa Milano. One of my favorite shows back in the day, Tony Danza, you guessed it, who's the boss? Alyssa Whoa. Milano, his daughter, right? She was about... I, That's she, awesome. Now, here's the thing. Put in context, I was younger than her at this point, so it was okay that I had a crush on a girl who was probably only 14 or 15 yeah. at the time. But I remember those teen, ma- like 17 magazine, those magazines. Man, that was like, she was the one girl that I had like actually ripped a page out and like put up on my wall because she was something special. Is she still? No. I had Summer Sanders on there. I don't know. I haven't seen her in a while. I haven't Wait, seen her in a while. Look at the thing. Just the hot take. <laughs> <In> the, <laughs> I don't know. What's she been doing? Like, Charm <laughs> Milano, a gym. Yeah. I, I think the last time I saw her, anything was Charm. She was she so. She kind of went like. I, she was so I think she though. really cares about like issues. Like she's a, kind of this woman who's doing a lot of stuff for like foundations. You're thinking, really Emma, about, you're thinking about Emma Watson, uh, who is who works for UNICEF. And she's no, great. Alyssa Milano has been active in the yeah. the whole uh, the, the whole, Me Too, yeah, the Me Too yeah, yeah. and Times Up movements and stuff. Mm-hmm. So don't worry about so it. So Star Lord so throws a Milano. fucking no, he throws a fucking thing and they all grenade. fly towards it. Really cool. Yeah, outside, yeah, cool. but it has shot, an off button that they are able to press, which I, I always thought was weird. I thought it just ran out of. Like, I thought it juice. ran out of juice. I didn't see him, but hit. A oh, button. I thought like it clearly shows someone like press it. No, I just thought they were just ran out. I guess it ran out of juice. And then they take that weird cement gun and start shooting at the Milano. Yeah, but it's okay because it doesn't hit it because he like swerves. Yeah, swerves. And And the the girl. I love the physics in that when he swerves, it looked exactly how a ship of that size would move. I was like, ah, I was really impressed by it. Like it looked like very jerky. And that's one. I'm small enough to do this, but you know, that's one of the things they do. They have fun with in this though is they play around with some of that, some of those elements for comedic timing. Like there's some like when Yondu catches the thing at the end, it's like it doesn't really work, but it kind of does because you can tell they wanted that comedic beat there. Yeah. So they're not too strenu- like they're not too stressed out by like the mechanics of the world to, to have fun with this one, which I thought was was good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're back on the ship, and he's like, "I'm gonna be honest. 
I totally forgot you were here. No, not even yet. He's trying to get away, and he gets shooting, and then they get caught in the water, which I thought was fun, and then they free fall, and he's flying all around, and the troll doll and all this other 80s merch is like spinning around because little Peter Quill got taken with his backpack full of his little gizmos and gadgets and enjoyable Where did things. he get the tape player from, you suppose? His mom. Yeah, he probably had it with him. Oh, you mean in the Milano? The, A-tri, the gigantic in the Milano. Milano uh, so maybe he just bought it from. Well, I think yeah, they, yeah. Somebody just like I'm them. assuming that technology is not everywhere, but like you know, somebody robs somebody at some point. Yeah, and that Raptor's got it. Got when it, he's yeah. in that free fall and he's flying back towards the back of the ship, yeah, it was horrifying. Yeah, I just horrifying. thought like man, like his head's just gonna like hit a panel yeah. and he could have been different movie. He just died. He's just dead. They smash yeah. back yeah. in the ground. Everybody's dead. You know what I mean? But instead, guess what? That's not this kind of movie. What's horrifying? They write the ship. Everything's great, and this woman, pink woman, comes out from the thing, and we had a comedic moment of him being like, yeah, I, I forgot you were here. Totally forgot you were here. Forgets her name, too. Yeah. Setting up, of course, then, how, the, where we're at with Peter Quill. Mm. A womanizer, Han a Solo type, moving across the galaxy. Uh, I believe we pick up, then, with the c- call from Yondu, but I, mean, I might be skipping yeah, Ronan's she, introduction. She I don't know. Uh, somewhere in there, though, yeah, Ronan gets introduced. He's naked and a bunch of black stuff. All right, whatever. That doesn't make so much sense. And it's like, hey, you know... How we listen to the kind of funny MCU interview and Ragu Bagu vids, and they unanimously decided that uh, the Thor two bad guys like almost weren't even on the list. They're that bad. Yeah. Let's do that again with yeah. Ronan. That'll yeah. be a good call. Mm, but the fact that Ronan's the butt of some bad. jokes is good. Yeah. The fact that Ronan is up, it doesn't like Thanos, and he has scenes with Thanos, and he kills Thanos' dude. I'm just, we're just let's get a whole bunch of Ronan section out here. This yeah. is kind of we're kind of talking about what happened in the movie. Speed as well, through, right? Yeah, yeah, because they, but he, though, yeah, sure, he's born out of blackness or whatever, and he has a bunch of people to take care of him. I don't understand that 100. Whatever. I mean, that scene that was, was actually cool pretty to, fucking like, cool when yeah. he smashes the dude's yeah. face in with a yep. jacket awesome. and a hammer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially because we knew that, that dude from uh, movies past of like talking about Loki from, yeah. from Avengers. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. What was yeah, he in Avengers? Blah, 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 blah. No, no, not that guy. Not that guy. I'm talking about the dude he had in that weird neck brace, and he's like, I'm gonna kill all you people, and then not that hammers his face in. That was, that was cool too. Yeah, 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 exactly. It Imagine was, how yeah. that actually looked, though. Yeah, I thought really about really that for a second. Like, how yeah. would it really look? No, the part where a person's gross. head to get hammered in yeah. by a giant purple guy. Terrible. Yeah, not good. But the, no, the part where he no. kills that weird Muppet thing that that Thanos keeps around, I was like, that guy's fucking. That's annoying. what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm surprised Thanos, Thanos didn't snap that dude's neck. Hey, I'm like, well, shut Thanos up. Thanos needs a fucking assistant. All right, there. Yeah, it is. but that guy's the worst. Think about how that's the thing they don't talk about enough. Snap his fucking. They don't talk about it enough. Is the fact how horrible? How horrible? I feel for Thanos. How horrible it would have been that he had to take that call from Ronan later in the movie. Because we already saw Ronan on the phone with the dude he killed, and now you can just imagine the phone's ringing, and Thanos is like, "Hey, annoying! Oh fuck! Forgot you oh, killed!" Oh, he picks it up like, "Hey, is you're talking right to me?" That'd be like me calling the White House right now and Trump answering. I'd be like. What happened to fucking civility and, you know, like, respect what for the office? To <laughs> <laughs> it begs the question, though, like, obviously, like, I, uh, like Thanos out there sitting in his throne in Space World, right? Why does he need Ronan to go get this thing for him? Why Doesn't can't he just dirty go his do hands. it? He's got other things to do. What's he fucking do? He's sitting in Space World in a fucking throne. With one dude. He's, he's got one dude. To find the other it's ones. not like he has minions. Remember, he's just it's got a couple a movies now, or maybe it's next movie, where he's like, he'll do it himself. He's decided he'll take yeah. care of this himself. He finally, finally gets off of the finally get off there. his little portal yeah. potty. First time Josh Brolin is Thanos. Who was it? Prior? Oh well, yeah, he didn't talk before, right? Mm-hmm. He just turned around, and smiled, smiled at the camera. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah. Okay. I like. And it was remodeled a little bit too. Oh really? Like it looks different. It has Josh Brolin's chin. His chin, his California raisin chin. Good for yeah, Josh Brolin. I don't, think, by the I don't way. think Ronan was as bad as yeah. You everybody saying. Ronan seen. sucked. No, we'll get there. Hey, don't, don't jump ahead, Rag. I think his right intro now. was cool. I think that like that. What whole I liked scene about it, he, he has interesting motivations. Yeah, like, yeah. Know, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah of course. Unlike, the, his motivations, of course, are the fact that his people signed a peace, uh, peace treaty with the Nova Corps on their planet. What's it called? Xandar. Xandar, right? right? And he's all like, "I didn't want to do that. That fucking sucks." So he wants to crush their planet. Thanos is thousands of years of war. Get the get the get the ore. Bring it to Thanos. Thanos will destroy it for him or whatever. Again, we're just, now we're just mingling. Up. But when he knows when he gets once he gets the thing, he's like, oh, you know what? I could just fucking destroy this. I don't need you, Thanos. Once I destroy that planet, I'm coming for you. I don't like this. Just doing the who the fuck cares? Man? Free Willy. Free Willy. Right. Yeah. Free Willy. Free Willy. Free you know what I'm saying? I don't, what did I say? Like, oh, yeah. I think I was thinking it. And I put it in your oh, head. Oh, I was thinking Free Wheeling. Yeah. Yeah. You were cool. Free man. Willy. <laughs> anyway, so then we guess what? Now uh, uh, Peter's out. He's got the thing. All's fair in love and war. <laughs> but then Yondu calls. <laughs> All right. Oh, Yondu. And the, yeah, the woman answers instead, and he didn't want to talk to it. And it turns out right there that he's a Ravager. He's from Yondu's crew. Yondu has this thing set up for the orb. Guess what, though? Peter Quill went off on his own to do it himself because he's had enough of Yondu's bullshit. We was going to eat you, boy. Yeah. They yeah. never had Terran flesh before. <laughs> By the way, so Terran, shout out to Michael Rooker, dude. That dude. Michael
and like some of the trailers and things. And I was like, I'm not going to like this fucking character. It's going to be generic asshole number one or whatever. Mm. You and you like him almost immediately where you're like, there's some there's something behind something. that. That sharp smile of his. I don't know what's going on. He's, there's a deeper, a depth to this character that we'll get into maybe in well, Guardians of the Galaxy chances, Volume 2. You know what I mean? Maybe, That's the thing. Perhaps. He doesn't kill Peter multiple times because mm-hmm. he's going to give him a second chance to do it, but I digress. Uh, Yondu puts a bounty on Peter Quill's head. Uh-oh. Trouble in the galaxy. Meanwhile, yeah, back at Ronan's camp, he, the guy's like, we didn't get it. Sorry. And then Ronan's like, oh, I look like a fucking idiot in front of Thanos now. And so then he's like, guess what? I'm going to send Nebula. Or Nebula wants to go out and get the damn thing back. Introduced and- to Gamora and Nebula, yeah. Nebula, daughters of Thanos. Right. I hate Nebula. Not by blood most of the Why time. Why do you right? hate her? Nebula might be. Well, yeah. I, yeah. I don't think either of them are. Sounds right. good to me. Didn't he just kidnap both of them from like it, conquer it, yeah. hater. civilizations? Maybe. You don't like Nebula? I hate her. You're What's wrong Even after I, Guardians 2? I, I, I still hate her. I wish she would like use her normal accent. I hate... Huh. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do this. Like, <laughs> what? She's torture she like shit. that. She's torture and shit. He's like shit. half robotic. Forced to fight, dude. What, what's the line that she says where like he's explaining everything to uh, Ronan and she gets she's like, Thanks, Sounds good to me, Dad. Yeah. But what? Oh, I just hate it. I hate it. fight you And I love Karen Gillan. You're I just so hate her as Here's what I love about <laughs> Nebula the most slash Karen Gillan is that I have no idea what she looks like in real life. Really? Once either. in a while she pops Jumanji. up in once in a, once in a while she pops up in like, you know, trailers and stuff and somebody's like, Oh, that's that's or like it'll be the Avengers or whatever. They'll show everybody together. I'm like, Who the hell is that woman? They're like, Oh, it's Nebula and I'm like, immediately forget on purpose. Because Nebula is just <laughs> perfect as she is. You know what I mean? Perfect this as she robot is. Robot right. lady. She's all good, right. she's fun. Don't Great. worry about her, Tim, all right? I like her. Her like, bones clicking back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. That was okay. cool. Uh, yeah, but then Gamora's like, nah, uh I'll go get it. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. I got this. You don't think right or whatever she does. I forget. She's like, Father already said me. And he's like, don't pretend don't fucking to tell me. people what I said. And she's don't like, but you speak just me. literally like, right, said sounds that. Sounds good, Ronan. <laughs> Jesus, dude. So we're all going back then to the old Nova Corps planet, Zandu, Rondu, Rondi, Rondo, whatever Zandor. the fuck it's called. Zandor. Yeah, yeah, Zandor. There we go. Cool. <laughs> whatever. We're there. Glenn Close is hiding behind a bush somewhere. We so I think, by the way, when we, when we did our reacts for volume, volume two, we called Michael Rooker's character the planet name for like 15 minutes. Oh, <laughs> Andy. Andy. What Andy. happened? Oh, sick fuck. You just exploded on yourself. Randu, Nandu. <laughs> Why are you crying so hard? <laughs> Andy's a Greg Miller fan. What do you want? Oh, yeah, oh, the jokes I had liquid, you. I had you fan boy. So here we are on the planet, and guess what? Peter Quill's there, big dick swinging. He's got the orb. He wants to sell the orb and fuck Yondu out of all the money. So he walks into the old jeweler, what the uh, broker, the broker mm-hmm. walks in the broker's place. The, this broker guy, I'll tell you what, he looks like a hairless rat. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's my yeah. old problem. Yeah, he looks like yeah. a naked roll mat. R- yep, roll mat, mole rat. <laughs> a naked roll Rufus? mat. Yeah. Na- naked mole rat. Mole rat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so he goes in there. It, he starts counting. It starts counting out the credits he's gonna give him. All these little gold. And you things. got the best eyebrows in the biz. Yeah, yeah. That's one funny. of my that's favorite. Funny. Yeah, love that line. Peter Quill being real funny. Um, <laughs> and then he mentions Ronan. Dude's like, no way, I don't want part of this transaction. Take your little orb, get out of here. Ronan, he wants to kill my whole race of people. I don't want a part of this. I don't mm-hmm. want anything. Peter Quill doesn't fully understand. He gets thrown out, doors locked. Either before or after this, I forget. Uh, Rocket and Groot have seen them now, seen Peter. They've identified it. We also get our Stan Lee cameo. Yeah. Him being a, a little a ladies' man. Yeah, Calling him a pervert. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so they understand now they got to go after him for money. Groot's drinking out of a fountain. Very fun scene very as well. Very fun. Rocket's very fun as well. Uh, Peter gets locked out. They got this cool technology. You do this, the door shuts. I like that a lot. I could go for some of that. Uh, when well, he gets locked out, Gamora's there eating some kind of weird space fruit. I get hung up on this for the next 30 minutes and kind of just forget about what happens. Pom- it's just it looks like, like a pomegranate kind of. But it was like black and white. Oh, so I was guava. like, is this an Oreo cookie? But is it an I Oreo it plant? sort of sea like, animal. A sea animal? Yeah, some sort of like an urchin? shellfish. Yeah. Sure. Urchin. Urchin. Like, like, that was going to yeah. be an urchin. Yeah. Maybe... And then, now this is improved, but I'm going to toss this out there, and you're free to correct me, of course, when you take over the Ragu Bagu Twids account. Maybe, Twids. maybe food on this planet and Glenn Close's planet is like hook food. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you where it's you fake? just imagine it, and it's there, and you're fucking maybe, satiated. Maybe you're you know right. what I mean? I don't think so. What I would do too on the hook world, by the way, is yeah. I would imagine the food inside me, and then I don't have to eat it. You know what I mean? Skip the process. Do you not like eating? <laughs> How do you put? I like it what? fine, but I'm busy. <laughs> I feel you, dude. What are you busy doing on this hook planet? <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you got? 
What do you got on a side? Walk me through a Saturday on the hook play. Uh, there's key, there's, uh, Never <laughs> there's keyboards and skateboards, right? So yeah, you're doing that. Both those things. Julie but Roberts is just chilling. She is. Somebody's yeah. got to talk to Tink. She's up to no good. I you know what I mean? Corrected. Got I all these other boys. You were telling me we corrected. couldn't get a good game of fucking Red Rover going? They tried. <laughs> God knows they tried. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Gamora's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Pow! Pow! Kicks him. Takes the ball. Now we have a little chase scene of her running for it, Peter running for it, Rock and Gruder coming in. They're getting involved. Everybody's just running around having a good time. They're playing Red Rover themselves. Good action scene, Tim. Very fun. You agree? Oh, yeah. I okay, liked it a yeah. lot. So they're Good using introduction of all the characters I, and the, the way that they handle right, situations. Right, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a really good way to introduce all that stuff. And it like for a moment, you were like, oh, okay, this is how they, they work. So, yeah. And I like, I like Rocket a lot. Yeah, a lot, a lot. Rocket, yeah, he Rocket, got me when he was like, it. "Look at this stupid thing," and he's talking about a little <laughs> <Yeah>, toddler. <laughs> and he's you like, don't look can, that cool. He's right? like, "You can't even stand up on your." I can't remember what he says. It's fucking great. Though. It is, it it is very great. funny. So they run around and they fight. And Groot's trying to put uh, Peter in the bag, but he tries to put Gamora in the bag first because Groot's not all there, pretty mm. much. Ro- Rocket's yelling at him. It's a Three Stooges act as well as just a, a, a violent fighting act as well. Mm. But it also shows like how cunning all of them are. Sure, they keep one upping each other. Like when like Peter waits for him to open up. The bag and has his blasters out. Yeah, you know, it's all those little back and forths. We realize, wow, these these you start to see the similarities of them all and why they might gel one day, twenty minutes later into the film as a team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. we're introduced to all their kind of abilities too, right. like Groot and being as like, oh, he only says I am Groot, and he right. kind of like grows. Rock gets his arms guns. cut off and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's okay. Why are you whining? They'll grow back later. That's a good impression of Rocket there. You got a future, man. She ain't telling me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, anyways, they battle for a while, and it's real cool. And then uh, 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 Peter Cool starts to get away, and Rocket's like, it's the little things in life, which is another great Rocket line. He zaps him, takes him down, and then Nova Corps shows up, freezes everybody. Uh, Gamora's already been knocked out. I forget how. It doesn't matter. I was still hung up. Probably the food. Probably the food, honestly. You know yeah, what I mean? Must have been. <laughs> she imagined she it would make her sleepy, too, right? and then it got sleep. Yeah, she got it was something that happened. never-ending game of Red Rover. Exactly. Yeah. That's what it was. Uh, so then we get an, an amazing scene of John C. Riley's character and the dude from Shaun of the Dead's character mm-hmm. putting all these guys into booking and stuff and giving us a rundown of who exactly these people are and what their abilities are. We get Peter Quill doing the old wind-up middle still finger Still funny. Thing. No matter Very how funny. many times yeah. I see that whole scene, I had no idea it's how this still machine fucking works. funny. By me. the way, yeah. shout out to that other guy you're talking about whose last name I can never pronounce. Who is the Shaun of the Dead guy? Who is the Tick in the new Amazon uh, uh, Tick oh, series. Oh, yeah, you're and right. And I have a newfound respect for that guy because I love that series. Okay, good. What a yeah. bunch of a-holes. Yeah, exactly. I don't like how they say a-holes. That was my one thing. Yeah, I get I'm not like the pronunciation, just the fact they say a-holes instead well, of assholes. Like nice, like, they're like on. the kinder, gentler people on this planet, the Nova mm-hmm. Corps. They, they don't swear. Glenn Close. Huh? Glenn Close friends. Glenn Close yeah. wouldn't say assholes. You do you, Glenn Close. Uh... That's a Glenn Coco reference from Mean Girls. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> I like but I, I, it was a little bit too moved around. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Forget mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Glenn Close, she'd hang out on the hook planet. You know what I'm saying? She definitely would. Anyways. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> they send him off to jail. I forget, it's got a fun name. I forget what the it clank, is. The Kiln. The Kiln. Kiln. Thank you very much. And uh, so they're walking in there. They get deloused. It's, it's it, Think Shawshank Redemption, but fun. You know what I mean? And also without the sodomy. But let's just, they're there getting blasted and stuff, and like all orange and stuff. And, we get, and then Peter sees like a uh, rocket turn around. He's got all the experiments, the marks in his back. And we're like, oh, no. We like, we're oh, not rocket. Yeah, you know what I mean? That sucks. Uh, not rocket. Yeah. Nathan Fillion. Is uh that big blue guy? Really? Oh, is that was him? Mm-hmm. Really? Does he say anything? Wow. Yeah. He's he's a, is he the guy that takes his Walkman? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't bring, bring his voice down. No, 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 no. Oh, you're talking oh, about the big dude that CG like was gonna rape guy. him? Oh. Yeah. I think yeah. Yeah. this guy's our booty or whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they walk in. That's an amazing scene. Yeah. Of Rocket, you know, laying out because they have the big blue guy. I guess Nathan Fillion comes over and Groot puts the sticks up his finger and like starts growing in his head. You assume really messing with his brain, yeah. changing it the way he thinks. Uh, gross, you, yeah. I'm sorry. Guy you, can't uh, taste sweets anymore. You, you you skipped a very important part, which very is uh, uh, prior to that, they take away his, his Walkman, his Walkman, yeah. and then they throw him shirtless. Well, he gets tased a lot too. into a uh, a play, just a pen by himself, and he turns and he gives the look of. Yes, Nick Scarpino. I do want you to rank my abs on the new podcast. Rank my abs. Whoa! So, uh, in order Breaking of news. ab Where ranking, rank? Where those uh, abs? I'm gonna still it's time give to rank those abs. I'm still gonna give Chris Hemsworth the number one spot because his abs are absurd. But I will give Chris Pratt close number two. Whoa. Really? So here's the thing. I deserve. I think he deserves bonus points for prat- the prattification. The prattification. Yeah. The whole process and going from fat guy. To that guy, because okay. he was the fat, funny so guy. Put him in number now one. he's the funny hot guy. I think you should put him in number one. Those well, abs were extremely I impressive. No, I think he, Chris Hemsworth. Though I think well, he deserves. What I'm saying is, 
you leave in the, I don't mean to step on your, can I contribute to your podcast? Well, I'm thinking, I'm sorry. I'm thinking because Chris Evans abs were really good. They were good abs. But here's, abs. here's what I would say. I, yeah, I would say it. your two can stand and that's where you're using the information we're talking about here. Okay. I think that maybe just sight unseen, you're just there with a stick of butter wanting to rub in my abs and eat them like corn on the cob, right? You'd look at Chris Evans and maybe be like, okay, you know, he's got it beat. But then you remember that Chris Evans came out of the womb with a fucking six pack ready to fuck people. It's true. And then Chris Pratt had to work to it. I will say, though, at that point, like as far as body composition is concerned, Hemsworth. Thor, his arms are fucking ridiculous. And my, and my wife looked at them and she was like, they're way too big. She sees Chris Pratt again. She goes, that's perfect. So as far as big is concerned, Hemsworth by a mile, Evans by a mile. But Pratt, and this is very confusing because they're all named Chris. And I'm just, I'm just throwing this all together in my <laughs> yeah. brain right now. He's what I would love to look like one day. Sure. And I think that that's just, just outside of the reach of attainable for me. I, I, remember. I, I was zoned out the whole time because I was thinking of a theme song. I like the thing that you just came up with. Yeah. Um, but it's just like a two liner thing and say, like, were they grown, grown in labs? Oh, it's time to rank, rank some abs. abs. Yeah, all right, yeah. Can you remember that yeah. for next week when we have to rank the abs of all of the Avengers and Age of Ultron? Sure. Sh Thank you. Sure. Anyways. So yeah, great scene makes the guy cry. The old, everybody hates Gamora. Cause guess what? She, she's from Ronan's thing and she's also Thanos' daughter and you could be everybody who's ever died in the universe pretty much these guys' fault so they, mm -hmm. everybody there hates him so they all like yeah they yell at her we're gonna get like, you yeah, yeah they yell murder a lot I you're like that. dead you're dead I but you're not the king <laughs> uh, you look out into the crowd though there's Batista Right there, Drax mm -hmm. the Destroyer, just chilling. Sitting there, doing something. Yeah, it looks like what you'd imagine, like somebody who, did, you know, those like the hand Stress worker balls? squeezers. No, 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 the little, like the little yeah. things you squeeze to make your hands. Oh, the metal things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's what Not he was crackers. doing, but that's what it looked like. Right? No, they're like the finger. Let's jump cut to his nighttime. All the men are just piled into things, sleeping together. Okay, cool. And then mm -hmm. another group's got Gamora. They're gonna take. They talk to the guard. Even we're gonna just take it out of the showers. It'll be easier to clean up. They don't care. They're gonna kill this person. So they, and they Rocket had alluded to as much as well by them. So they go. They start doing that. Chris Pratt wakes up. He goes down there. Rocket goes down there. We go down there. Uh, they were all got the knives. They're ready to kill her and do all their mean, mean to her. Ah, Drax shows up. It's my. You know, he this the uh, Ronan killed uh, my daughter and my wife. I get deserved to get this kill. He gets ready to. Then Chris Pratt stops him, starts talking to him. Uh, Drax like whoa, 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 funny back and forth. Yeah, funny. Of course, Drax is great. And the You've movie's just this? hilarious. You've seen this, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then he's, he's like, like, yeah. And then he looks at Drax like, no, no. no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why would I run my finger across it? Drax is so fucking good. So good. This movie's so, so fucking good. And th th this is where we're first introduced to Drax's personality. You see him, you're like, oh, he's just this big loaf. And it's like, no. You're actually the funniest part of this movie. He's a walking through the Thoris. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. He's the funniest part. Yeah. Hmm. So one of them. All the metaphors go over his head. No, we're not that scene yet, but you know what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Nothing goes over my head. I'm too fast. My reflex too fast. Catch it too bad. Uh, anyways, this, yeah, if we, Ronan's going to come for Gamora. Why kill her? You get your chance, chance to she fight the big guy. All right, cool. That's good enough reasoning. And he takes the guy's knife, and that was, that, that guy's, that was his that favorite. That was a great knife. scene. That yeah. was a great scene, too. I like this knife I'm keeping. So then we just guess. jump to the next day or whatever, and guess what? Rocket's got, gonna break us all out because that. Well, they also they also hatch the plan that we're gonna take the thing and we're gonna sell the thing for a gajillion credits or whatever. Because mm -hmm. Gamora knows the buyer. That Gamora reveals her whole thing that she was gonna leave Ronan anyway. This is her way out. We're a team. We're all gonna split the money. Hooray! Next day. All right, here's the plan. Rocket's got the plan, right? He needs this little, well, he needs the guy's leg. He needs to get into the tower and he needs this battery thing and everything. While this happens, of course, Groot walks off to go do it. Hilarious. Oh, real quick before that, I love the asleep for the danger, awake for the business, per usual. The money is per, per freaking usual. usual. Yeah, I love that yeah, line. Yeah, I love that yeah. moment. Uh, so then it's all crazy stuff. Everybody's going, this is another amazing action scene. Right, mm -hmm. Tim? So I, I, I go to you as the, you're oh, the love, expert. Yeah, no, fucking love it because it's the perfect mix of unique choreography with comedy and we finally see Rocket in his full right. rocketeering nature oh, with the yeah. fucking guns and that that oh yeah it's like it's that just spin so around, yeah. perfect comedy. and Drax what is he a disgusting creature <laughs> and tosses the thing well, so by, by the way before we get to that I, I do love that scene where they're sitting there hatching the plan that's so indicative of what Guardians is right if you think back if you think forward now it's a Guardians 2 where we have that intro scene where instead of focusing on the action we're just focused on baby Groot like running around fucking around it's so fun to do that and it totally turns all that stuff on its side because he just kind of walks Super off out of focus way, yeah. and then like walks it. You don't really see any close ups. He just starts pulling it. And you're like, was he going to fucking pull that? Yeah. Bam, or we can get it now. I guess. So good. An improv. Do it last. Yeah. And also really cool with like the anti-grab stuff and just yeah. like all the things they did like that. Great scene. We set up how smart Rocket is that he's not all talk, that he can do all this amazing stuff on the fly and he can just 
jury man or jury rig anything out of you know out of the blue. Great moment of get the leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't need that. What was it like? Was he hopping around? It's funny. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, and he exactly. just keeps laughing and can't stop it's laughing. So like, oh, he, like, is, it's so good. He like set up his own joke. Moment. Yeah. Enjoyed yeah. it for so long. So then, yeah, they're all ready to leave. They get their stuff. Wait, Peter doesn't have his, his Walkman. He sends everybody out there looking like, you know, uh, just wait for me. I trust you. Of course, he didn't send the orb with him. He kept the orb. So smart. He goes there, beats, beats down the blue dude with the headphones, takes the headphones, gets back out there. Yay, we're the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yay. Another great scene, having him shoot out the side of the thing yeah. and come. With some and, good music um, behind him. Yeah, and what's his face? is Drax. like, what, what did you get that was so important? And he pulls out the Walkman. He's like, you're an idiot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's great. He's an idiot. It's super great. That's the theme song, right? Or is that Avengers? No. Uh, honestly, Avengers. the Guardians and Avengers orchestral <clears throat> theme sounds a lot of like. They do not sound at all like. Uh, but this, I'm so happy that we're finally getting good scores. Guardians theme, they have a theme, and it's recognizable, and it plays often and readily. And I cannot wait for Infinity War when we hear Avengers theme mixed with Guardians theme, and it's going to be fucking awesome. What about when Wonder Woman comes in? Skunk, uh, skunk, skunk, skunk. I'd be surprised. Is that, is that Kirsten <laughs> Wig dressed up as a cheetah? Is it not going to be fun? <laughs> no. No. That's not gonna lie. <laughs> Somehow Bill Hader's there too. Everyone's like, what the fuck? Oh, My tail keeps me balanced. <laughs> Call back. I have tiny yeah. hands. You know, anyway. uh, so they're in the ship. Yay, they're going to go take it to the planet. I think we get probably a Ronin interlude here. Maybe even the Ravagers. They're mad. But some, you know, we're getting some B plot there to get him over to the big giant head out in space. Nowhere. That's a celestial That's being. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Put that one in your file for Guardian Two. That'll mm-hmm. come up more importantly. By the way, I love that where they're 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 flying into it and you kind of can't make it out for a second. They're like, wait, is that a giant fucking severed it's head so that's creative, just floating yeah. in space? It's so cool. Jesus. And they take it a step further and be like, all of the spinal fluid and all mm-hmm. the vital organ mm-hmm. fluid that's still in this thing is like worth a lot of money. So they've just set up this whole colony around it to mine, mine it this all. thing's like head and its brain matter. I think that's really Imagine cool. Imagine coming yeah, up I, with that shit. It's so fucking creative, man. It's I awesome. I thought it was interesting that the that's where the base was for the collector. But then as they're entering, they're like the mining, it's, I don't remember what was the name, but it was the name of the collector. Tavon Group. Tavon yeah, group, the Tavon yeah. Group. So it was like his main base. So it makes sense. That's where Do we know is. which celestial this is? Big like head which one. being it was supposed to be? <laughs> There's a lot of them. It's what it's called. Oh, okay. I mean, so it's I, not I, one of the, it's not one of the ones the one that... Because, you know, like in, in, in the Gauntlet series, like he fights the Celestials. He fights like Infinity and... Yeah, I don't yeah. fucking... Space it was probably and, the same dude that had the staff later me. in the video. Oh, that dude was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking the creature from the day the earth stood still. Sure. Cool. They get there and they land. They got to wait for the collector's people to make. We didn't introduce the collector earlier. But the collector's there. He's really mean to purple maids, apparently. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Do you have elbows? There's a lot of fun stuff. We, meet. we see the collector. Sure. Uh, there's a captive dark elf from Thor the Dark World. Mm-hmm. There's a Chitari soldier from Avengers. Saw that. There's a mysterious cocoon that director James Gunn has since confirmed to be to belong to fan favorite comic character Adam Warlock. And there's even a long one, which is a slug type monster from Gunn's earlier comedy horror, Slither. Oh, nice. Wait, I, I thought it. the golden people make Adam Warlock. And that's in the new well, one. Yeah, I mean, find that out later. It later. Yeah. It'd be so cooler if it was, he's just there. <laughs> and there's also, hey, there. can you DM James Gunn and tell him to retcon that shit? Sure. There's also Cosmo Thanks. the Space Dog, yeah. uh, who's yeah. a character who appears in the 2008 comic run of Nova and later appears in Guardians mm-hmm. of the Galaxy comics. He's the head of security on Nowhere, speaks telepathically in a delightful Russian accent which is a reference to the real real life space dog Laika and later joins the Guardians as a liaison with with nowhere which becomes the Guardian's base of operations in the film he appears first as a prisoner of the collector in that meeting between him and our heroes and then again during the post credit scene licking Tavon's face the fact that Rocket and Cosmo instinctively growl at each other as Rocket passes by is no coincidence either in the comics the two really really don't get along mm. nice so they have time to kill. What are you going to do? You're going to bet on these little CG lizards. And they lizards. run around and you're going to drink a lot. In there, we get a scene of Rocket getting drunk, Drax getting drunk, everybody having a fun time getting drunk. That's what it's all about. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, uh, Gamora and Peter have a, a heartwarming scene outside where he teaches her about music and puts that on. They start to dance a little. Then she flips out at the last second when he's trying to kiss her. She won't give in to his uh, pelvic sorcery. Great lines. Great, great scenes. Great line. Also, Fucking shout out to Kevin Bacon. Yeah. You get a Kevin yes. Bacon reference there. Yes, it is. And so good. Eventually, Ooh, the really good. we're Kevin Bacon. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? We're just like Kevin Bacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do, you think, do you think when Kevin Bacon watched that movie with his kids, he was like, see, I was a big the deal The first few in the times I saw that movie in theaters, that line got sort of, like, I think there was a funny moment right before that, and that line sort of gets mm, lost. It got lost in the noise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I hadn't really noticed it until I think like my third watching in theaters. Fucking great callback, dude. It's so yeah. good. All about the I callbacks. I feel like Kevin Bacon's the kind of like his kids were like, 
do they mean you? And he's like, no, someone else for sure. Some other Kevin Bacon. Yeah. He's yeah. just too cool. He's like, he just loves it off. That. I'm he's sure his kids are like 23 that. by now, but yeah. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. But like, you get what I'm saying. He was in awesome in first class. This world that we're imagining. I know, but he okay. was awesome in first let's, class. Let's rank Kevin Bacon from You're first class. Let's <laughs> put him in there. Let's put him in the rag. Put, let's put Kevin Bacon and Michael Fassbender in the rag bag today. God, they look back movie. in there and guess what? There's a fight breaking out. It's uh, Groot and Drax going toe to toe. They're fighting. Rocket's fighting. Everybody's fighting. They're all angry. And you go in there. And they're sure, all drunk. Yeah, exactly. It's a drunk fight. Rocket's real mad because he was, everybody's being mean to Rocket. Oh. And he's finally like, it's tough guy. Shit's going down. Yeah, exactly. He's, a real, he's sad. He's, he's a very sad little shit. raccoon. Everybody knows that. Yeah, don't call him raccoon. Well, he's, he's drunk, you know, so that's, that's what happens. Because he called him vermin, right? Or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, and then, but then he remembers what everybody else says, too. Right. And so, yeah, he almost shoots him. Don't shoot him. One, just one more night and you'll be, you know, you'll be made for life. You don't have to worry about it. All right, cool. I won't shoot anybody. And then, right then, purple made a woman walks in collector's ready to see him we all go see the collector collector there for some exposition to explain mm-hmm. what the fuck mm-hmm. is going on good exposition yeah. great 100%. Hey. I thought yeah. that's a good example of how to do exposition it's another one of like in the theaters I remember watching like okay cool that's an infinity stone but watching all this back to back where like he's showing what the infinity stones are and there's the test rack and there is the red stuff from Thor Dark World like mm-hmm. oh neat alright cool yeah. I didn't pay attention to that later earlier sitting on. down watching it with Robin she's like I'm gonna go turn on the oven like no no, no. what this is, this is the this very is important to yeah, everything yeah. and I love yeah. that it sort of gives context as to like why these things are so powerful like he talks about how before the universe was made there were four there were six singularities and, the, and that was what everything kind of spanned from I think that's pretty cool so it gives you constant like these are the most powerful things Mm -hmm. in the universe right yeah i mean well that's the thing is like i think they did a good job of of explaining gods in a different way because it's like we already heard about gods with the as guardians and Mm -hmm. all that but it's like this like no no no, these this is like the bigger level this is the universe wide who created life type shit Mm -hmm. so great you delivered it i'm gonna pay you he opens up a drawer and also starts counting out these crazy like gold chips and stuff and like this is where, where you got to really question the movie <laughs> the logic right of like all right i understand that the guy working over there with his crystals and whatever he's you know the, the broker he's got it the collector's got whatever is 400 billion dollars whatever how much what are the currency values just, just he's running the mining does it make enough does it make sense to i don't to if, I, in your, in if your dresser elon drawer. musk was gonna buy you oh. tim i wouldn't expect to be paid in cash but here we I'll are, tell you what, okay. Elon Musk probably has safes everywhere. He just boop, 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 face scan and a million dollars to you. And see, that fine. would make sense, and that'd be fine. But here we are with hard money. But like, it's okay. his planet, or yeah, like no it's his little with station. Collection. It's like, bigger no world. It could happen. Him, yeah. But he did. He did, it was kind of weird that he was like, "Cool, I'll pay you guys right now." He just opened up the drawer closest to him, and there was just a shit ton of money just sitting in there. Hey man, I'm not gonna get in the way he does business. All right, he's in slave trade. Whatever he does his thing. Karina. Another funny scene too of like before this, where he offered to buy Groot's body upon death. I like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve, upon death, do you think of course. he got Spoiler, it? There will be no body. Jeez. Anyways, yeah, then our maid woman, she's like, I've had enough of this. I, she grabs the stone, giant so purple dumb. explosion. Well, she just didn't want to live that way anymore. She wanted to kill him, but she couldn't even get she that She didn't done. know how powerful it was. Yeah. I mean, she just heard a giant she, yeah, exposition saw, about how powerful yeah. it was. I mean, no, but like, no, no, no. She didn't know that it would kill her. I mean. But like, no, we see a, a, like seven people try to grab it and they get killed. Remember? Yeah, she wanted to die. Yeah. She was trying to kill she her. Knew she knew she was take everyone with her. I totally misunderstood then. Okay. I thought she was like, I'm grabbing this. I'm going to kill her. Next motherfuckers. time, instead of fucking paying attention to Robin, why don't you do your job and watch the movie? Damn. You just got laid out. What was she putting yeah. in the oven, though? What was she making? Yeah, what she make? Make? Uh, grilled good. chicken and salmon, like oh, prepping for the week. Wow. Oh, oh nice. she's making her meals out ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. That's smart. Um, so, yeah, there's an explosion. All, it's laid waste to the collector's base. Uh, oh, God. They, well, this isn't good. And Gamora caps it again. They all run away. They're all arguing this about what this is. Hey, whoa, this is a problem. You had that you know thing I mean? in, your, in your purse? <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> that was why are you still holding it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> another really funny scene. Them outside freaking out with yeah, it. Yeah. Being like, what do we do? What do we do? Yeah. Sell it to him. It's like, no, just give it to Thanos. Or whatever. Not Thanos. Ronan. Ronan, Ronan yeah. 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 So they had to go back. It looks like you know they're on the same page. And then Peter talks about selling it to somebody else for more money. Gamora gets all mad. Then Ronan's ships roll up. Yondu rolls up. Turns out that Drax drunk called Ronan, <laughs> told him they had it here so that he'd come to fight him and he'd get his chance. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, yeah, Yondu's just there because he he shook down the broker. I left this part out. He shook down the broker when he he wanted to buy the little frog guy for his d- dashboard. Now, do you think he bought it or he just took it? I think I, I think he oh. bought it. I like to think that Yondu I like to think that Yondu things. bought it. I think Yondu yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also like, he is at 100% a dick. Yeah. And that's the thing, too, where we get... Uh, well, I think it's the first time, right, in the movie where we get introduced to the Yondu's other, thing. The other, yeah. No, that. Oh, well, we see it kind of fly up. No, that's in the beginning of the movie. You first see it fly up, but it doesn't use it until way Fl- later. Wait, fly up to him. Yeah, we've gone back to the. It flies the up broker. Next to him, right? The broker. The broker. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. about yeah. Right when he neck. threatens. 
I think I'm we saying see right it one prior time, or one time before that, when people on your ship are talking shit to him, and he pulls it aside and goes, "Okay, well, that's, yeah. okay, okay." But this out. is like the time of like, this hey, this thing does something. Yeah. We do. So I'm just trying to set up this, this the thing. Broker's neck. Yeah, exactly. Also, no, sh- head. Shout out to the Peter this. Quill's neck, broker's head. Right. Shout out to that scene with the broker that shouldn't have been funny, but he's just like, <laughs> yeah, that was really good. All right, yeah, I love yeah, him. Yeah, I love exactly. this character. So then now we get more action here. Guess what? Yeah, every, you know they try to run away in these like mining vessels or some shit. Drax is gonna fight Ronan. Ronan's like, I'll fucking fuck this guy. We Ronan. see all the Ravagers, including Tim Gunn, yep. James Gunn's brother. Well, is this is our first time seeing Tim Gunn. Well, I think we've seen him earlier too, but I think it is our first time seeing the the Navigator Ravager, which is Rob Zombie. Oh, oh, hey. I, I didn't, didn't know, know that. that. I didn't know that. Oh, oh that, yeah. no shit. He's in the end of the movie too. Mm-hmm. He gets like blown away, right? Bam, is is he one of the guys that's like shooting up in the thing oh, yeah, and blows up? That's awesome. So yeah, now we got another cool scene of uh, them flying around, getting shot at. Things are blowing up. Uh, Peter Quill puts his ship in another ship, starts controlling that. That was pretty cool. That was cool, but weird. I don't know that would work mechanically, but you know what I mean? It was fun. Yeah, little hands. They weren't hands. that little. They weren't that little to control. They were kind of, actually, it was the opposite. Giant hands to control very <laughs> tiny, precise controls. But I digress. I'm fucking just shows how good the technology is on Noah. And how, what a good pilot he is. He's a great pilot. Uh, then, yeah, Drax is fighting Ronan down there. Ronan's like, I don't remember your fucking family. But I thought, beats the shit out of tosses him in the vat of uh, spinal fluid. Very I guess, easily whatever. beats the shit out of him. Yeah, yeah. Showing, us how, even close. showing us how strong and cool Ronan is. Yeah. Now, of course, so maybe it's because cool. Drax is drunk. We don't know. Maybe that's I don't why think so. Not. No, no, because like he no. definitely like at one point just kind of slaps him and he f- goes flying and smashes yeah, he the door. Yeah. I'm just, just like oh, that's just easy. Out there. Just out there. Uh, so yeah, they go out there. They're gonna do this thing. They're all flying in space. They're fighting. These things weren't designed to be out here, Quill. And then Gamora's ship. She gets blown up. She had the thing. They grab the the orb. They take it away. R- Rocket's like, yeah, you know, Gamora. She's got enough uh, implants or whatever to survive a little bit. But there's nothing we can do. Peter Quill's like, fuck that. Fuck puts that, his mask man. on. Flies out there. Puts the mask on. Her, well, calls Yondu. Says, here's where I am. Come get me. Puts the mask on her. Then he goes there. All his blood vessels in his eyes pop. He, he looks like a very painful death, but very slow. What a titanic moment. Like, you can put Rose on the door. You can fucking fit her in there, dude. Come yeah, on. exactly. You're not two fly giants. Out, grab her or fly right back. I it's not like I two Draxes or something. You, yeah. you you know, she's a tiny... Make it work. She's small. Yeah. Come anyway, on, it doesn't matter. So, they get, yeah, they get her, snatched up. Grab her, put her in the thing and keep your helmet on. Yep, right That's there. What That's, That's what, what I thought. That's yeah. Why not? You yeah. fucking you're There's not some, a good high level problem solver under stress. I'm just maybe saying that. since those weren't designed for that, they didn't have. Once you open it, the oxygen supply's gone. Maybe oh, it's just the yeah. oxygen inside that of might, it. That, yeah. no, I don't know. Terrible design. What happens if you get caught out in space? You got to go out there. I think you you're supposed to go. Out. Well, that's not how the space works. That's not what you going to do. Also, anyways, they get sucked the into hole. the ship. Yondu's there. He brings the thing up. Brings puts it to Quill's neck. He's going to kill him. Same story about yeah. You know we they were going to eat you. They never had Terran flesh. I'm like, why is that? That's not what normal people say. I'm like, that was funny. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's a good scene. Uh, but he, he's like, oh, wait, are we going to flip this thing, Yondu? You're going to be a rich man? Yondu's like, yeah, yeah, He's all about that. He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, my Yondu. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do that with your lips. Because no, like they focus one. on his teeth out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway. I've never <laughs> seen him do that. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Yondu doesn't do that. But Greg Miller doing Yondu. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You, gotta just, you gotta take some artistic liberties. Exactly. Come on. Andy. You know I what I mean? <laughs> uh, so then yeah, Quill and the Guardians are thrown back downstairs. They gotta come up with a plan on the on the fly. They have the jackets. Huh? Get the little jackets and outfits. I'm not there yet. They, no, they, they haven't, haven't gone done that. No one, they formed but the they plan first. But they did have first. the, the was it, Drax on top of the ship with a giant Oh, right. Gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it Sorry. was like, you have five seconds to comply. Yeah, yeah, that it was It's like, wait, how do you, you were going to shoot him? Yeah, another <laughs> hilarious, hilarious. You were going to save us by killing us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, then, hey, Peter, how's it going? Yeah, <laughs> they have 12% of a plan. And funny dialogue. Which is rapper, so yeah. curious. What it's, do you think about the 12%? And I found this on a Things You Missed website. I didn't fucking know. We're about to learn some shit today, Easter egg style. Uh, this comes from thethings.com. The things. There are many running jokes which pervade Marvel movies, from Lost Arms to Stanley cameos to Tony Stark's hatred of being handed things. Yeah. That stops, though, after Iron Man. I didn't realize. <laughs> you didn't never noticed that? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that after I Iron Man 2? But one of the stops? earliest and most famous is the 12% reference. What began in Iron Man, Pepper Potts' insistence to Tony that she's having 12% of a moment, was continued in Avengers, Tony again offering Pepper 12% of the credit, and Age of Ultron, Quicksilver's 12 minutes older than Scarlet Witch. Here the joke's incarnation is delivered by Quill before the film's climax, which claims he had 12% of a plan to take down Ronan and steal the orb. It's fucking weird. Interesting. I like those little inside jokes. It's fun. Yeah, it's like like how Pixar puts that same three numbers everywhere. It's, you know, they're old. Six, six, six. No, no. No. (laughs) 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 Uh, You know what I mean? They got a plan. They're going to go do it. They're going to take down Ronan's ship. They're going to go in there and do all this stuff. Great. Good job. 
Cherry Bomb. Oh, what a great fucking song. So Off the Days to Confuse soundtrack. I love that though, because this I mean this is the scene where they finally gel as a team, right? Yeah. Where they all realize they get matching outfits. Hey, we're actually friends. We mm-hmm. actually care about each other. And oh, and they gonna, talk about being friends too. Yeah, and he t- he talks about how he's like he's like, You're asking us to die. And then they all, each and every one of them, accept like maybe it's actually better to die together than live apart, which is kind of an endearing scene, right? And Rocket has that great line where he's like, what the, what the hell? My lifespan's not that long anyway. And they go and then they get ready and they all suit, which this was the first time I noticed this. And watching it prior, I didn't realize they were all dressed the same, like similar. Oh, mm-hmm. They all put on red outfits. The red, 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 red Ravager stuff. Yeah. yeah, which is cool. I didn't realize that was like there. I, I, did, I just didn't catch it the first time. The Ravagers, yeah. the Ravagers have Groot. a trailer, I mean, uh, Taylor. In, in volume two, they talk about because they make the little oh, group awesome. suit. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so we get that scene where they're walking down the aisle or walking so down the fucking cool. And they all kind of come and they all form. And I, and I get I didn't catch this the first time either, group but it's grabs. supposed to be this <laughs> awesome sequence, like this powerful moment. And like Gamora yawns. yawns yeah. And like and they're just like, oh, Rocket. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. just so good. Chris so good. And I love that because it's, that's the Avengers circle moment. But yeah, yeah, yeah. for these. Characters that we should not give a right. fuck about, and yet somehow we totally do. <laughs> yeah, they fucking they take, did it. Yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> so they go over there that Nova Corps planet again. Terry Misu, whatever. There's on the Zandavar, whatever. Zandavar, Zandar. Zandar. Sorry, Zandar. And they are Zandarians. They sent a mission to the Zandarians over there, going sure. closest peeps, and they're just like, you know, what? It's the John C. Riley thing where he comes in. Mm-hmm. Really? <laughs> why did you say message? You said mission. Oh, did okay. Yeah, yeah, I was like, my no, head is no, doing. No, I was like, wait, why is delay. that? Sorry. What that? What I was kind of thrown off by that. <laughs> Anyways, they go there, and John C. Riley has the great scene of yeah, like he, he was like, he sent me a message. He's like, do you believe him? And he goes, I do. He said he is an a hole, but he's not a hundred percent. And I quote, not one hundred percent. Not a percent. Do you believe him? Yeah. He's, he's like, I don't believe that anyone's hundred percent. Yeah, that's so good. But like, you put him in. Uh, do you think that he? I'm sure he was like enjoying making the movie. Do you think he took anything seriously the entire time he was on that set? Did he have to? He didn't no. have that many lines. He's yeah. great. Yeah. He's so good. He's I mean, I think, like, him I think, earlier with uh, Star Lord being like, Oh, oh you're yeah, the guy with a nickname, Star Prince. Yeah. yeah. I think oh, that was his character was to not yeah. give a shit about yeah. anything. And shout out to Glenn Close, by the way, for doing this. You know, like Glenn Close obviously is a person who's had like a great career. She's an actress at a great 101 career. Dalmatians. She does not have to do a movie like this. And obviously it's just cool. It's fun, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Why not? It's all, it's, what a and fun she's movie. fucking great. Is Nova Prime, is that her character? Yeah. yeah. She's great as that character. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. So well done. So he, that message was sent. They go over there. They're going to start attacking. They have this cool thing. They shoot the ship with this giant fireball. It hits there. And then by the time it fades, they've already mm-hmm. gone Flares down there. down. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, we left off the point, too, that uh, when Ronan was like, I'm not going to listen to you, Thanos, he grabbed the stone and put it in his hammer. He can blow people up. That's pretty cool, too. Pretty cool. cool. Basically said, Thanos, I'm coming for you after this. And Thanos just kind of smiles and, like, cuts the thing. And then Nebula's like, wait, what? I'll go? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what? I'll go. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, Papa. So Nebula is is there, and they're doing the thing on the big ship. Everything's happening. The firefight's outside. Cool. That's great. Ravagers are working together. Then Nova Corps, they show up. They got the message about the dicks. They're all fighting alongside the guys. He got your dick message. He got my dick message. Such a good fucking line. Uh, Then we get inside the ship. Drax, uh, uh, Gamora, uh, Peter Quill. Maybe Rocket? No, Rocket's outside. Rocket's outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they make their assault on the base here. Uh, Nebula shows up, fights Gamora for a little bit. She want, It's a good fight, I think. Another good fight. Right, Tim? Cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because that's what she does. She does a fucking weird thing. And then she breaks her own hand off rather than reach out to Gamora. That's cool. Yeah. Looks so painful. Did we reach... Did you talk about the part where all the ships kind of link up? We're no. not there yet. We're, We're not, not quite there, there yet. Moments away. Meanwhile, uh, Yandu, he's been, his ship got shot down. He went down to Earth. B- a bunch of guys show up. And like, Ooh, fucking call him off. Then we get to finally see what the fuck this little arrow does. And it, <laughs> and it does a lot. Yeah. yeah. I still feel like somebody would have shot him, but it's still a great scene. And the guy, but, I mean, it's J- so quick. And everyone's and it just really like, wasn't oh, look that. at this thing. Oh. It went through me. The guy that got killed that was talking is James yeah. Gunn. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Neat. Uh, but, so back up on the ship, yeah, they, yeah. Uh, 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 Nebula's out. She's gone. So they all form back up. They make their assault on Rowan, shoot him with the gun that's been around forever. It's a big explosion. There's this ha- moment of happiness. Then now he ain't dead, man. He's right there. And everybody's you like, skip oh, the, no. uh, the wall thing. I mean, I kind of just jump around. I felt like he wanted to talk about it. The wall thing was freaking cool as hell. It was I really thought the cool. wall thing was the dumbest part of this whole movie. It slowed the ship down. Yeah, but that's the it only planetary time. defense Until system that Xandar has, where it's like pretty cool. Yeah. You don't have a big cannon that shoots a fucking warship out of the sky. Like, this is all. They were like, oh shit, we never thought that someone was going to fly their warship over to it's us and assault time. our planet. Nick, it's peace time. They right just now. finished a thousand years of war. They don't have well, a fucking a, gun self, that resting. can shoot from the, the fucking ground. To the space. I do think it was, it was an incredibly niche, niche, niche. 
I think it's either way. Whatever you want to say. Niche is what I like to say. Uh, niche I think it's an incredibly Solid. niche thing to have on your ships to like, oh, let's make a giant force field. Yeah. I think it's like, how but often do you what, what's the the game there? Yeah. It was a cool idea, but then, it, yeah, when you think about it, whatever. It's, it's not, not practical. It was fucking cool because it's not the whole thing, it would have fallen and killed everybody. Yeah, yeah or you know, they would have destroyed it. It was a, like a weapon that's like a cannon or something else. But, but yeah, yeah, let's take the small one man ships, link them all up. And thank God that it's just big enough to form a, a little cozy blanket on the fucking blank. the nose of this gigantic warship that we've never seen before, apparently, because we've just finished fighting a thousand year war against the Kree. But it's cool. Don't worry about it. We'll just link our ships up. Oh, by the way, all those pilots fucking dead because yeah. they yeah. just smack. N- no escape pods, by the way. No, no, no way of ejecting. They're just like, well, I guess this thing's ah! <laughs> sandwiched in between things. They didn't get smashed. Wasn't didn't what you call it? Shoot it. With the no, like half the pilots died. Yeah. No, part, no, yeah, but I thought he. I the thought dude that from happened. ER died. I thought that happened because he shot it with his hammer. At one point, he was like, "I'm done waiting," and he yeah, shoots yeah, it with a hammer. I remember seeing their shots like where, where the like the guys were like, "Oh," and it was like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah." Well, it's because it broke the. They didn't have a hold on it because the the, the stone broke broken. some of their shit, so then yeah. they got squished. God, I would never seen that one coming. Seems like it's crazy that right a, that a missile or some explosion could have just broken the chain, thus so now causing this amazing trash. defensive it was weapon. Missile. It was the power this stone. Amazing the, defensive blanket. The entire planet. Nova Prime. Should we launch the defense blanket? Yes. Yeah. Launch the Whoopi. What if one of those sh- ships would have just been shot? What would have happened? Stupid. It probably would have been fine. <laughs> probably would have been fine. Like, they don't have any bigger warships. Just, just like one little, little hole. Well, it's like it would just ruin the yeah. structural integrity of it, right? That's what happened. That's why it starts buckling. How does it look though? <sighs> like a Whoopi. There's no orange there anymore. Yeah. Like yeah. Like yeah. Like I'm pistols. asking the tough question. It's like James a little gun. square that would be just not there. I almost said James Guns. Mm. So, anyways. The explosion didn't work. Now the ship's just hurtling towards Earth with everybody on it or whatever. Mainly just the Guardians of the Weird mm-hmm. And then, uh, uh, what's his face? Ronan. And so it's going down, and it's it's hurtling towards planet Xylophone. It's going to crash into the city and kill everybody, right? Uh, we did have a cool thing we left out. Not really a cool thing, but it's cool. Well, that's cool, but it's not like a big deal. It's not as important. It's probably just as important as reaching out for a fucking hand. Anyways, uh, that the, the pink little pink girl and her pink mom got saved by Rocket and the people. That will come into yeah. play later. Well, you missed another great moment, though, too, when they're fighting uh, Jaimon Hatsu, and he's like, Star-Lord. And he's yeah, like, that was cool. Fine. 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 That, that is a good, such right. a great Funny. fucking moment. Yeah. yeah, that was cool, and that was a good fight, and it was, like, disturbing to see Groot just, like, go <laughs> through the people and do it, and then he turns around and does that, like, smile, smile. And, like, <laughs> Jesus. But I love as he's, as he's doing it, like... Chris Pratt has his yeah, face and, and, and Drax looks at it. Yeah, Drax looks <laughs> like, it's great. Right? This is so awesome. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, Groot starts making a giant uh, well, dome no, you, around him. Well, no, you missed him. the, like, they shoot the rocket at him. Nope, we were said that quite a while ago. You said that, that? You said that quite a while ago. Didn't uh, work. Raps the, starts making him into a giant ball there. He's going to, he's strapping everybody in and then Rocket wakes up and he's like, no, Groot, it'll kill you. And then Groot's we like, hated it. Absolutely Groot. hated it. Yeah. The We Are Groot, great. Heartfelt. I get it. Cool. But, me and Kevin were talking about this. I don't think Just, it was that I, bad. I hate this type of exposition that's, it's going to kill you, dude. Why? Why is it going to kill you? Because he's opened his whole body up. But it's, and it's like, like, if Rocket didn't say that, we wouldn't think he's going to die. Well, that's yeah, but that's why good. he had to say it. He's right. his only yeah. friend. I get that. He's his only friend. And we that are That has Groot. nothing to do with what I'm saying. <laughs> we are Groot. It's he did more of the like, fireflies. If, he did, if, if Rocket didn't say that and he just went and went over everybody, we'd all assume, oh, cool, they're safe. So what? We'll, it just bothers like, me that it has to be this moment of him dying. Like it's like, like we 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 haven't seen earned enough to have this sacrifice moment. Tim's dead inside. What does that mean? I think if if oh, if he was only doing that to save uh, Rocket would make sense for me. Like he's not trying to say like who cares if he's trying to save the team or not. Like it's not even about that. He's trying to it save was, Rocket. I don't care, but like, it's not about save trying to save. It was, save uh-huh. it was tugging at the heartstrings, sac- yeah. like sacrificing himself in general. Him dying in that moment, it's like this. It, How it, else was, would it they felt so lazy to me. And him coming out with the start? fucking like avatar ass bullshit. The like, lights? Yeah. Mm. You Last didn't like everything. that either? What's wrong fucking, with that? They're just weird. He can make light. He made a flower. Like, you you mad about the fucking so flower you don't too? I don't like this touching moment, but the space defense will be. You're totally fine with that. Mm-hmm. Whoopi. Okay. Yeah, what the fuck's a <laughs> It's a it child's blanket. Right? It's like if the ships were like, oh, Thanks, Greg. Uh, guys, we have grills on built into our ships in case like we're attacked by an alien that throws stakes at us. Yeah, like. It's at the. Stupid. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Stupid. I see. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't now I don't agree with you because I think that maybe and I, maybe I should have spoken up earlier. 
to everyone who oh, loves the late. Nova Corps out there. I'm sorry. I let we you have down. nets Shut. that shoot out in case bad guys throw fish at our planet. Well, like, like you we said, can it was, catch you the said fish. it was. But it, you it know, can also know? catch the bad guys. <laughs> you it said has, it was I'm sure just, they would have just blocked energy shots too. You said it was just big enough for the ship, right? Well, that's just because that's the orientation they put them in. Those guys can go up and down and all around. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm I get, shape, look, I get it. And I get want, that that's yeah. their technology. Like thinking back when they captured Peter Quill and yeah, and they Gamora, did that too. Like yeah. when they just get yeah, frozen in space. Field, yeah. So they are like maybe they they do use force fields. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that's a great defense and maneuver. But if you, <laughs> it's a great defense and maneuver. <laughs> but you have zero <laughs> offensive capabilities planetarily. You have zero planetary defenses. Well, no, I, I don't buy that. The message was like, hey, if this guy touches the fucking floor. He can kill your world. So let's so he can't slowly touch. stop this thing, which, by the way, once they realize it's not working, with it, was there not another, like, do we not have a nuke or something we could throw? That, you know what would stop it? Blowing it to fucking small particles. That's what would stop it. That'd be really cool. And then you've got giant chunks falling on people. They evacuated the city anyway. We already got, he didn't get that part. No, we did. Yeah. That's remember the purple. I mean, like, they say evacuate the city. Right. And then there's still and motherfuckers there's running people. all over the place. So it just wasn't, chilling, it's watching. It's hard to evacuate the city. Can't be I done agree, in like but 20 I just, minutes. Fair. I just, fair. You know, whatever. It doesn't help. Um. So, anyways, we are group. Nova Corps. They're just a bunch of bitches. We we knew that. That's the whole reason Guardians got to come save the day. Anyways, yeah, we are Groot. I like. I liked the. I liked him wrapping him up. I liked him strapping them down. I liked the wide shot of him netting himself into the ship. Yeah. I just don't. I, I was like, it's a cool scene, except for like all of the physics and everything else of like how did he get, how did they get thrown from the ship clear yeah I mean, whatever i'm not gonna bust balls about it, but I mean, it I, that's what i'm saying that's my problem with it is it doesn't make sense and it's fucking weird i and would then, rather it, he it did it like and then rolled them out or something a cheap sentimental moment like, like, life whereas like i feel like they could have done a better job making it not cheap and i didn't like i enjoyed that i didn't moment. like yeah, the, yeah a very small part portion of it i like the we are groot scene i didn't like the how his they, vocabulary the, grew so much right there yeah and then i did like the like the aftermath or whatever of them you know they all survived he He's dead. And this is sad. Rockets devastated. Destroyed. All right, cool. Yeah, that's great. But from the ashes, Ronan walks on out with his big old hammer and his big old big infinity old Lee stone. Pace. And he, he's what? His name, the actor's name is Lee Pace. Oh, okay. The Shaun of the Dead guy. He walks no. out there and he's no. on planet xylophone. He's not about it. You know what I mean? He's like, guess what, everybody? Ah. And like, what are they going to do? How are they going to stop him? Rocket starts working on a little thing. Everybody sees that. Peter gets up and starts to dance off. So Hilarious. funny. It's such so funny. Child. What? Such a good thing. Okay. And see, this is one of my things yeah. that I like. You, you say that, like, you know, Ronan's just like Dark Elves or whoever, right? Some forgettable whatever. It's not. I don't agree uh, based throughout the movie and just a little bit of his motivations. And I liked his back and forth with Dark Side. I was like, all right, cool. And I like your motivation. Not Dark But, uh, so thank you very much, Thanos. Sorry. Yeah. So many knockoffs it's here okay. in the Marvel <laughs> Universe. Sure. I can't keep it straight. <laughs> also, stop. I think some of them are, some of the mess ups I'm doing are in character. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, uh, when you said Dark Side, I was like, oh, I that's your joke. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I don't know which one that was, yeah, honestly. I, but I know that it wasn't, but though. It, but it, what does it matter? It's funny. Uh -huh. Anyways, uh, he's, but I like this. I think it all pays off here where he actually stops to have this like real world conversation with Peter Quill. Like, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he's like, I'm dating. Like, and then he just stares and like it's like awesome to see that uh, like as dumb as most distractions are in movies action mm -hmm. movies specifically here's a purposely dumb distraction that works and you have this like him stopping his monologue you'd be like what is going on why are you blah, blah. and then turd blossom gets used which is a great you shout so out good. I see, yeah we were at chipotle for lunch and when we were talking about oh, you got that some scene, turd blossoms coming uh you you brought up that like it's crazy that that scene worked because it really could have not worked and it mm. could have been cringeworthy and not funny yeah and it's like they did such a good job because of how well, it reacted was, it could have easily killed the movie. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But can was, you imagine any other movie trying to do that and and just be like to get to the end and see that and be like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, yeah. But it worked and it's it's unbelievable. That I, I think it was, it was. The, like the delivery of Chris Pratt doing it and then Gamora and uh, Ronan both being like. What the fuck? Like, I love you. Like, Ronan Gamora, Ronan like, has a moment with Gamora where he looks at her like, what the back. fuck? Yeah, <laughs> it was great. great. Meanwhile, though, Rocket made another one of the shooty shoot gun collide, guns. Had there you go. And he fires Explosive. it, not at Ronan this time, but at the Infinity Stone in the hammer. Hammer blows up. Infinity Stone, Stone starts falling. We get some cool 360 slow-mo vids like you're at PAX or something. of mm -hmm. uh, Chris Pratt jumping yeah. for it and Ronan they grabbing for it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. They want to save some money. 2013. Chris Pratt grabs the stone. He starts freaking out and burning and breaking out and like he's coming apart at the seam. Like that kind of shit. And then, yeah, we get a moment of him then 
looking and being normal for a second and looking over and seeing his mom reach out saying, Peter, you know, blah, blah. Man, like, oh. tears to my eyes. That, yeah, that's that's like every time. Moment. Doesn't Gamora Pretty. shout out, like, take my hand? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And yeah and but and he, but he, he remembers sees, his mom saying, yes, take my hand. And he's in remember? space seeing he her. He absolutely remembers his or mom. Or is it that he sees it? Maybe he's being transported to another plane of that's existence. That's not what the part po- of power stone does. Well, but he's also part God. He is part God. That's true. He, he, I, mean, I just thought he was tripping out. In that vi- well, I mean, I would give it to you, but he's he, in that vision, he's whole again. You know what I mean? She's there. We're up in the stars. We could, if it was just to him remembering her, why not just transport fucking milk dud mom right there and like have her there and he's still breaking apart? Why are we in the stars? Why not everybody be back in the hospital room, right? I think there's more to it than that. Either way, and teared I think up like every exactly. four times in the theaters I saw it. Gamora grabs him. She starts getting torn apart. Then Batista grabs uh, uh, Pratt. He gets start torn apart. Rocket grabs him. But I, lo- Boom. I love that. Yeah, though. it's just a little <laughs> hand little coming up. I fucking love that. was the part that I almost <laughs> lost it at. Because I was like, okay, Rocket's going to grab him too, but it's such a cute little <laughs> head where it's like, what's this little guy going to do? Especially since like Drax couldn't hold the power and then it just ends up being just the last little bit they need to actually control this immense power for just that one second yeah and that's all it takes and they have that we're the awesome, guardians of the galaxy he's like bitch. who are you can you should be able to do this you're, you're supposed mortal. to be you're mortal who are you so we're the guardians of the galaxy is he not mortal you know like why did he say that he's he got that god i mean he's yeah he's, he's, he's Kree god. god i don't know he's just assuming that he's a normal human being yeah, 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 yeah or yeah, normal terror. zandarian or terran or whatever zaps him roman's dead back in the thing Everybody's happy for a second. They're all bloody and broken up, and it's well. Not Rocket's not happy. Rocket's still very sad. I need that stone, boy. Yo, what's y'all new, everybody? <laughs> y'all new coming over here, Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> he comes in. He wants it. And then a little sleight of hand from Peter Quill. Gives the thing to Yondu. Yondu walks off. Peter's like, don't open it, Yondu. You see what's going to happen here, man. Don't open it. And Yondu's like, yes. <laughs> so then he walks. I was wondering yes. if that face is going to yeah. make a return. He <laughs> walks away, right? <laughs> and then funny. Peter Quill's like, I still got it. It was all that. Yay. Uh, Rocket's over there being super sad. Batista rubs his head. Uh, oh. And then he, but then we plan a thing. And, anyways, we go back to Nova Core and Nova Prime. They're like, and the, we, when we scanned you, we, it turns out we fucking buried the medical results and you're part God or something. You got some celestial in you, son. And that's why you could last a little bit longer with the stone. There was like, oh, we should look into this. Who is his dad? The internet will speculate for a long time and it will be someone nobody guesses other than it was Kurt Russell. We knew that part. Um, they and then uh, all right, John C. Riley show them their ship. Uh, Rocket's got the little planner. He's got the stick in it. Uh, that's Groot. They're all in matching outfits again now. Now they're in blue outfits, which is nice. Nordic what if core, I, I want something that somebody else owns? Yeah, yeah. They walk them out and they, <laughs> they've rebuilt they the Milano. Their records, yeah. <laughs> they've re- they've rebuilt the Milano and they've expunged their records. But don't do any more bad things. And then we get great things of Rocket and Batista being like. What if I do this? Like, no, these are it's these like, are crimes. No, you things. can't say that. But what if I want it more than the person who has it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, you're not understanding. What me, if man. someone does something wrong and I kill them? He's like, well, that's one of the worst crimes there is. And he just goes, hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, John C. Riley and Peter Quill have their final moment there. That's really sweet. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, I'm looking after him or whatever. Get on the ship. You want to do something good? You want to do something bad? A little bit of both. They choose a little bit of both. Good Take right. off. Seems like the movie's over as we play some Michael Jackson. Yeah, well, Jackson 5. Jackson my five. apologies, everybody. And then uh, we get the dancing Groot stick. But let's be honest. Else, so. It was Michael Jackson. Yeah. Can we? Come on. Yeah, sure. Get From out the of here. Opening up a can of sardines plugged. there. Huh? You're opening where do they, where do they open? Like, he opens the gift eventually, and it's like, oh. Right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, before oh, this, yeah. obviously. Oh, awesome. Next volume. Yeah. Freaking yep. awesome. Yep. Yeah. Such a good Such a good moment. Gamora dances a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Very sweet. And then credits roll. And the then, baby group, man, it's so cool. Yeah, and so, we already so saw Yondu fun. open the. No, we didn't even mention it. Yondu mm. opens it up. It's a troll, and he does this. Yes, <laughs> he's very happy about it. He's he very, doesn't do that. He's, he, but he's like, I'm proud of Peter Quill for getting one he's over. Smiles, like, he's like, that fucker, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna eat him. him. Some yeah. I'm gonna eat him. <laughs> one day I'm gonna eat him. <laughs> <laughs> one day I'm gonna eat that fucker. <laughs> Credits. Then we get our after credit scene of Benicio del Toro there drinking his drink. The dog licks him, and then Howard the Duck, Seth Green over there. Seth Green. Why are you gonna let him lick you? Disgusting. Yeah. Drinks his drink. I nailed it. Yeah. Well, I tried it a lot. When yeah. I, I was casting, it was Lego, Howard the Duck, in Lego don't, Marvel don't Super Heroes 2. And uh, when they gave me no direction beforehand, I watched that clip about a million times and, di- and patented that impression. Yeah. And then I got on to do it. And they're like, oh, don't do that. Do yours. Don't do that. All right. Thank you. <laughs> that is very funny. It was a very weird post credit scene, Super by the way. Super fucking weird. But I love it because it, it like really sets the tone of Guardians. Yep. And like, it, it's like, fuck it. We're different. And like, Fuck you, yeah, Howard the just, Duck's gonna be here. Sure, Howard the Duck, weird. A movie that was like super obscure from the 80s that was that not really a big deal. But then they had to credit the guy that played Howard the Duck. I guess I didn't realize it was Seth Who Green. created yeah. or wrote it. No, like no, the no, last, there was Green. like, how it was there and then it was like, Howard the Duck played by Seth Green. Like right afterward. I'm yeah. like, that's fucking, who the fuck cares? That's weird. 
I didn't notice that. I didn't see that. Yeah. I must have looked away. Well, you want to, you know, you don't want to ruin it in the credits. But, uh, Unless it's it? going to be like Metal Gear Solid Four. <laughs> Big what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, some fun things. Maybe that we some got. fun things on. I me. like fun. We you nailed like fun? most of it. Um, the the only thing there is a Easter egg that to this day has not been found. No way. Yeah. And there we have the big one. This also comes from thethings.com. The one that nobody can find. The final Guardians of the Galaxy Easter egg, which James Gunn absolutely insists does exist and remains yet unfound. He even recently suggested that he'd give up $100,000 if he were proven to be lying about it to this day. Suggestions have included a Captain Marvel appearance and a hologram, a giant Groot and rocket image plastered across the stars of Callus Moore, but Gunn claims that the final Easter egg still has not been successfully wow. deciphered. Wow. You can just Damn. lie about it forever. Yeah. <laughs> also worth pointing out now, because none of us knew it then, and I didn't know about it until like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Groot is dead, and Baby Groot is not Groot. Mm -hmm. so okay, Groot. that's something that came out. We talked. We did a whole morning show topic about it or whatever. But like, I had always assumed that he had died, and that that was a clone. Like that is like he will grow and become the physically the same Groot, sure. but his mind a new mind. Seeing as how Groot has been dumb as a bat, a tree. Literally yeah. dumb as a tree the whole movie. I don't think there was enough information ever to have that. I probably never yeah. noticed either. I kind of wish that Rocket explained it all. Me too. You know? I kind of wish that I, he was just like, so oh. if you, if it's chances are you haven't seen the morning show and maybe you're like, Jen and I were talking about this last night because we had had a conversation together about it. And she's like, oh, did you know? I'm like, yeah, did you? Like, and we didn't obviously until this happened. So Guardians, uh, one comes out that happens sometime. I think between then and, and Guardians two, James Gunn puts up a Facebook post being like, hey, by the way, Baby Groot is not Groot. Different, different m memories. You know, no memories. Obviously, he's his own person, his own personality, all these different things. And that kind of just never makes yeah. headlines that I never hear about it. And then we see Guardians two, and then I guess uh, most recently someone reacted to that news, like a famous. month ago. <laughs> yeah, and that got it all stirred up again. And James Gunn linked to a whole bunch of different stuff and was just like, "It's like Groundhog's Day every time this comes around." I've talked about this before, but I keep missing. And trust me, for our small bit of internet celebrity, the amount of time that I have to tell you what to order a Portillo's, even though I've put out that video a million times, and I would expect everyone to have seen it or known about it. No, so many people don't. I understand where he's coming from and the fact that now you're something millions of people enjoy and how the fuck you communicate a message. But it started, oh, this is how I think it got in, around. The, somebody noticed it that was famous before or this time around where it was. You know, he's like, oh, man, in spoilers for Guardians 2, you can mute your ears for five seconds. You know, somebody's like, oh, man, will you ever bring Yondu back? And he's like, no, death needs to mean something in my death means something in my movies. You can't in this movie's like, what about Groot? And he's like, Groot, baby Groot's not Groot. And everybody flipped out. For me, I feel like that points to the fact that he missed the mark in that. Yes, Guardians. Two, don't get me wrong. I don't need a million lines of exposition, but it should have been just a line from Drax even like, well, I call him baby Groot. He's not Groot. And, he's like, and, and then uh, Rocket be like, well, yeah, he doesn't have the memories or whatever, but he looks like him in this and he, he sounds exactly like him and he acts like a stupid moron like Groot. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't understand why anybody else outside well, of all Groot's are the same. Do the same thing. They all say the same. I am Groot. That's all they can say. Well, so it sounds like him. It doesn't sound like him. It sounds like a baby. Sure, but I mean, it's Vin Diesel. I think, I think the I think the only person that can really settle this argument is Baby Groot himself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Making use of, I think this is gonna put him down. Making use of the props. The audio is listening. Wait, is that, wait, now, real quick, I'd like to point out <laughs> that he brought on the prop and then used his own face to cover it, so people can't even <laughs> say. There we go. We spent way too much time talking about this. Let's rank the movie. Okay, sorry. You want to get home? You want to go home? I understand. I'm sweating. It's, 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 yeah. it's really hot. Yeah. Yeah. How about right. we rank some bad guys? Ragu, bagu, vids. Ragu. Now we get bagu. Nice. Thank you very much. Remember, if Sorry. Ragu, ragu bagu off. is rad guys talking bad guys. Uh, it's where we rank the MCU villains each and every week. It's me and Andy, no one else. If no you'd like else. to run twittercom slash ragu bagu vids, you can go to patreoncom slash kind of funny for a cheap thousand dollars. It's been, you can run it for a week. No one's done it. So I'm officially increasing it to two weeks. Whoa. You get to run it at $1,000. That's $500 uh, a week. That's a you great. You get to send messages to Joey Noel, who will then post for you to make sure they aren't like Nazi stuff. We don't need that kind yeah, of crap. You know what I mean? Unless it's about 
uh, you know, How Red Skull. Nazis then are. I understand yeah. that. Okay. Right now, the rankings for Raggy Baggy <laughs> starting. Skull, you know, a lot of good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Fine person. Great person. Yeah. Uh, Raggy Baggy starting at the worst. We have at number 10, these fucks from Thor 2. Number 9, Abomination and Hulk. Number 8, Loki and Thor. Number 7, your boy, Obadiah Stane in Iron Man 1. <laughs> number 6, the Mandarin slash Aldrich Killian in Iron Man 3. Number 5, Sam Rockwell and Mickey Rourke in Iron Man 2. Number 4, Red Skull in Captain America. Number three, Hydra in Captain America, Winter Soldier. Number two, Loki in Avengers. Number one, Michael B. Jordan, Black Panther. Yeah. So now we got to figure out where we're putting uh, uh, Ronan. I got an idea. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't even going to be funny. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Put him in the number six slot. I'm putting him... I'm putting him right above Abomination. My man. That's what I was saying, yeah. too, right oh, there. Man. So we're putting then, Boy, that would move. Gosh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He would take the number nine spot, Ronan would. Putting him between, uh, 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 below him. God, you guys like Obadiah way too much. Oh, so ah! now it would be the worst. These ah! fucks in Thor 2, Abomination, Ronan, Correct. Loki, and Thor. Correct. I agree. Shake hands on it. Woo. And that's a ragu bag. Okay, You're done man. Right great episode. Please play me. Play the song out. Yeah, click the bell. Dun 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 dun. Ragu. Dun 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 dun. Wiggy 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 wiggy. That's a long click intro. Click the bell. <laughs> click the bell. <laughs> you know. You don't want to miss when we put up new videos. Yeah. Now it's time to rank the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right now we have. Cool, Greg. Can you bring it up? Number one, Captain America: The Winter Soldier. Number two. Avengers number three, Iron Man number four, Black Panther number five, Iron Man two, number six, Captain America the first Avenger, number seven, Iron Man three, number eight, The Incredible Hulk, number nine, Thor, number ten, Thor, The Dark World. Now, Anyone have now, any hot takes? I want you to say, before we go to this is somebody's first episode, maybe Chris Pratt's. Yeah. How do we rank them? Uh, we, whoever, someone throws something out there and then I'm the in lowest... more like, what, what are we basing them? You don't, you don't have criteria oh, where you oh, talk yeah, about yeah, action, yeah. Just, <laughs> how they tie it's just in. like the villain, action, comedy, it's standing alone, universe building. I, as we went on with this, I've just kind of realized okay, that yeah. all just That's never gonna happen. mixes together okay, cool. anyways. Um, I'm going to say for me, I'm debating on whether or not it's above Iron Man. Mm. I have I this at Man. number three above Iron Man, right below the Avengers. I got to put it right below Iron Man. No, wait. You know what? That's crazy. Wait. You're a psychopath. Hold on. I love Iron Man, man. I'll tell I you what. I love this If you go back and this? watch Iron Man again, it's it's every bit as entertaining, if not more so. It's just a, it's just a more fun movie. Here's, it, here's what I'll toss fun. out there. I thought so. Here's what I'll wow. toss out there is the fact that this is the first one of these movies I feel... <laughs> Outside of Avengers that I've watched multiple times yep. before. I've seen it. I would put this, this movie so as times. my number one. In this list right here. And so what I was driving at is I feel like this is the first time I've watched Guardians. Because the last time I watched it was at a Christmas and it was like, oh, I haven't seen this in forever. That I've watched it and it was so fresh. And so that took away some of my enjoyment of it. Mm. Where I was like, all right, I know what's going on. I remember this. Blah, blah, blah. Which is unfair. To, yeah. No, I remember, totally. I, I remember how much boat. I loved it in the theaters and how much I loved it after a few years apart. And then now coming in, I was like, all right, that was good. So my initial re thought was put it at number four underneath Iron Man oh, and above Black no. Panther. But I think what I'm doing there is grading too harshly based on that. And so I would make a case for it to go number three. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Man, I, I, wanna, you say it's I, like I want it to fun. be number I just, one. I think to myself, is, well, I'm mean, Grant, I'm sorry, Kevin. Go yeah, ahead. no, it's fine. I was just saying this movie is fucking hilarious. This movie is sentimental. This movie like it's builds true. a team that we care about in one movie. This and the pacing's good. And the pacing's great. And had no I business being I just, This but movie I feel like is fucking phenomenal. Everything this movie does, I feel like Avengers does better. And that no, builds a team, brings all. the team together, has those wonderful moments in Avengers but, where it's like the awesome actions. I think the action in Avengers is a much better set pieces. I think you care much more about the characters. This, again, don't get me wrong, I still think it should rank highly on the uh, uh, yeah. up on the list. I just feel like we have to give credit where credit's due for a lot of these things. And Avengers just did the team coming together the best we've ever seen it. So I don't think you can rank I, it up. I think that. this is, this did a better job. But, I, but had, again, at the end, the, the last sequence where it's like, what? This is so contrived and stupid. Like what, the last the, sequence. Well, the, the thing trying to get to the Earth. I, I just I'm like, this is really where we're at. Like this is like it's as opposed to like Alien Invader, an entire alien fucking army invading it's New York. We have to thing? fight the battle for the New York. But it's just so much better done in Avengers. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I I disagree. I we think that, like Avengers moments. was really cool, but I think this movie, adding like after this movie, like comedies change, like the event, uh, yeah, the tone changes where now there's this really good 
thought out comedy aspect that like this movie was a f- like this is the first time we've seen it in this world where it's or in, in Marvel. Yeah, I feel like yeah. Avengers, Iron Man, and Guardians are each kind of the the originators and set the tone for certain mm-hmm. things. Whether it was the coming together, the single origin story, or the group origin story. Damn, and I might have to agree with Kevin. Damn, dude, there is you guys are better than Winter Soldier. Fucking mind if you think it's better than Avengers and Winter Soldier. I don't know if it's a better movie. I just out of all these movies, I feel like you. I feel like you're saying that because you just watched it. No, no, like if you watched Avengers again, you'd be like, I don't know. I feel like I just enjoy it more. No, definitely not. After I watched it last night, I thought, you know what? Didn't enjoy this movie as much around this time because I've seen it so many. That's so many my problem times. too. Is that's why I say it's it's worse than Iron Man. This is I, no matter movie. how many times I watch Iron Man, can be on AMC tonight, and I'd be like, "Fuck, I gotta watch this movie." Whereas I was actually kind of dreading watching Guardians, and guess that's what? Crazy. It kind of wasn't as fun. This is the movie that that's I showed crazy. to so many people, of like to get them interested into the MCU, yeah. MCU, because it's so funny and it's so relatable, and I think the comedy is it. It's a fucking comedy with like action bits and yeah. people enjoy that. But stuff. it has like moments with like the mom where it's just like, yeah. fuck, man. In the beginning of the movie, you fucking feel that scene. And at the end, when uh, Gamora reaches out. Tears. Yeah, dude, that moment also is just like, holy shit. Yeah. Uh, I, I think feel like this I, is an incredible I hate, movie. I hate the intro to Avengers. I hate the ending of Iron Man. I feel like this movie was better paced throughout, but I still. I think that on this list, for all of us, the movie that we've seen, the, or like on the complete list, on all 19 Marvel movies, the movie that we've seen the most, hands down, is Guardians. For every one of us. Not no, me. I've seen no, Avengers really? way I've more. Seen it once. I've seen Avengers and Iron Man way more than Guardians. I, I just seen, feel like they're, I, again, I feel like you guys are not I've giving nearly like enough credit to what, ten what times. Iron Man accomplished and what Avengers manages to accomplish. This is a movie that is a culmination of five films before it. This is a movie that has done nothing, that has, no one has done this movie as well since. DC's tried, hasn't really worked. And that's not even, I have an, I, I want to try to avoid movie the show a, talking about the, what's going to happen later. Right. But my thing is, I think Thor Ragnarok is the best Guardians movie. Oh, it is. And like, that's, that to me is like, mm. I love, don't get me wrong, I think Guardians. this movie needs to rank highly. I think it is a great, it, it takes what they've done with the Marvel Cinematic Universe up until this point and said, hey, how are we going to change, how are we going to make this feel fresh? How are we going to make it feel new? And they go, let's take a chance with humor. Let's take a chance with these off-ball, goofball characters. Color. And they bring it in, similar to what they did with Iron Man, where you're like, who the fuck cares about Iron Man? And guess what? They made us care about that. So on that, in that regard, yeah, I could understand the interplay between this and Iron Man, but like, come on. The fucking Avengers brought together a bunch of characters that nobody gave a shit about up until that point and made us fucking I got a boner when that fucking when they circle around him, right? I got I fucking love that scene. There's nothing better than that scene where they're going through New York and they're finally fighting as a team and it ends with Hulk punching out Thor. Like that's the best fucking scene in any Marvel movie. That there's nothing that even comes close to that being as exciting as that in Guardians of the Galaxy. That's the best scene I in mean, that, the MCU, that, I'd agree. 100%. That, that's the best scene, but like overall like this movie is just Better, like, like to me, every, you're not. giving a lot yeah, of points to under, Avengers. Yeah. No, you're putting not. a lot. You're putting a lot of points to Avengers for putting together all these superheroes. But to me, like, we knew who they were. Like, we no, knew we who d- we did because we had five movies before. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. But, but this like, is like they made you care about four random people that no, like when you said nobody, nobody cared about Iron Man, like. We kind of knew, yeah, we who, knew Iron who Iron Man was, was. when when you, you heard know? that Rocket Raccoon is a character, and you're like, wait, what? Yeah, stuff. he's a raccoon. You know, I had I had maybe uh, sure maybe nobody, two episodes of a yeah. Marvel show that I'd seen where Iron Man kind of showed up. But up until that point, nobody gave a fuck about Iron Man. Nobody cared about Thor. Well, they cared, cared a lot more than Guardians of the Galaxy, possibly. Yeah. But no, not, not possibly. Not yeah, people sure, did yeah. about Iron Man. I guarantee well, I, yeah. you're talking about when we get to Avengers. Or you're talking about Iron Man one. He's talking, I'm talking about, about Iron Man one. Nobody gave a fuck about Iron Man. And I think they thought you were talking about Avengers. Oh no, I'm talking about that's where the wires got crossed in this conversation. You guys are trying to say that. Yeah, I stand by. I stand by. Sure, he's a much more. He's a better known character than Guardians. Yeah. Undeniably, sure. But did you care about him? Is it like I'm just saying, Iron Man? I get that Guardians did for the next phase of the MCU what Iron Man did for the first phase of the MCU. I do, I do get that. But you guys are out of your fucking mind if you think that Avengers is a lesser movie to Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, that no, is man. blasphemous. That is obscene. I totally can, disagree. I can rewatch. I, think I feel like if we, and I honestly yeah. feel like this: if we had watched Guardians of the Galaxy first and then came back and watched Avengers, you guys would have a different opinion on it. You think Avengers is better? No, I feel like, I, I feel like I it's just too fresh so. in your brain. No, I've just no, seen this movie so all, yeah. a lot more than everything. I have. Man, fuck. This is a hard vote, dude. I, I just, I love this movie, and I think that it's so fucking funny and good. And at the end of the day, I want to watch it way more than I want to watch Avengers. Like, no, we just disagree. Uh, yeah, I definitely disagree with that, too. 
But I do think it's close to Avengers. I don't think there's that big of a, a gap. No, I'm not, again, I think we're, we're arguing minutiae here. We're not, yeah. I'm not, so arguing, I'm I'm not saying arguing Avengers that. is great because it's the culmination of five movies. I sure. vote number three. Does anyone else think it's worse than that? I think it's worse than that. I think Iron Man should be number three still. I feel okay. like if I had to watch the two movies right now, I'd choose Iron Man again. That's crazy. So ten, ten doing, crazy. doing the voting, starting and Iron Man being the last thing. Uh, if you think it's better than Iron Man, raise your hand. Okay. Do you think it's better than Avengers? Raise your hand. The new ranking. There it is. The MCU. Number one, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Number two, Avengers. Number three, Guardians of the Galaxy. Number four, Iron Man. Number five, Black Panther. Number six, Iron Man 2. Number seven, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. No, the first Avenger. Uh, number eight, Iron Man 3. Number nine, The Incredible Hulk. Number 10, Thor. And number 11, Thor. The Dark World. That one's going to stay there. <laughs> I was gonna say, are we gonna take a bet and uh, uh, see if Thor and Dark and Thor Dark World end up being eighteen and nineteen? Those well, are so for the, sure. The, the thing last is, two. I think There's it's nothing, pretty safe to say that yeah. the, the, the whole five, the bottom after three after Iron Man three, I think that's staying there. Yeah. That's not moving. I mean, my thing is, Wait, I think it goes mm, even higher than really. That. Um, next week we have Avengers. Oh, Age of right. Right. That's all, the last. Oh, yeah, question. That's the only question, and even that, like without watching the end, I've only seen it once in theaters. I, I can't imagine I can tell that. you right now where I it's think that I think that that's going to go maybe above Iron Man 2. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like mm, yeah. Ultron? Yeah. Oh, okay, this is going to be fun. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I I mean, I, not having watched it since theaters, I I mean, but that's how you feel I, about a bunch of movies, right? But I mean, I, but not about like thing I didn't like. Mm. Well, you, no, that's you didn't like. Uh, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, yeah. Right, right, right. But I, I mean, like, I didn't. Nick li- had Black Panther the Low Hulk. Remember, yeah. I didn't like. Mm, I guess Don't throw right. me in the bus on this. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> bring that shit back to the comment section. <laughs> I think Ultron's gonna be below Captain America. Probably. We'll see. We'll see. I don't want to get every, everyone in their heads and shit. I'm excited. Next week, Avengers: Age of Ultron. We're getting there, man. We're over halfway. Yeah, there, that means Ooh, we're closer to Spider Man, the new number one. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> Hell yeah. When do you get the show? Where do you get the show? Promote it. Hit the bell. Subscribe. Like, share. Time, Spotify. What do you think? Spotify. Andy Cortez on Twitch. Kind of funny reviews. <laughs> YouTube.com slash kind of funny. Spotify. Tuesday, 9 a.m. Spotify. you guys. Have a marvelous day. Yeah. Thank you. I was Howard Duck in a video game. So this is like a callback to that. Well, because like in the guard. Buy Lego Marvel. Superheroes too. I'm in that. I don't get paid more if you do it. I was Howard the Duck.